to our beans, what we grow and produce. GEPA is supporting ACCA because of mainly the support that it gives to cocoa and cocoa derivatives. We have been supporting so many other products and services and it is important that cocoa is also supported, everything that comes out of cocoa. And to do that, we need to showcase what we have. By working with GEPA, ACC is also basically aligning itself to the Africa Continental Free Trade Area Agreement, which we have all signed on to, and exposing itself to the wider market of Africa. So we think that it is in the right direction that we are working with ACC and other partners as well, as we are promoting all of these um, partners on the African market. My name is Efua Asabia Asari. It will please me immensely if you can be a part of the ACC, either as an exhibitor or as a spectator, or as a potential exporter or somebody who wants to know about the cocoa business. I'll be very pleased if you pass through. Thank you. The Know Your Cuckoo Foundation or KYC came about because we realized that there was a paucity and a lack of knowledge really about uh, cocoa in, in Ghana. When you look at it, we use just around 19% of the cocoa bean, so 81% of the cocoa tree is unutilized. So we thought that it was high time to be in a position to educate, to create events, to, to create the, the necessary platforms to develop cocoa knowledge and opportunities a lot further. The theme for this year's ACE event is Africa Beyond Beans. Currently, Ghana and the Ivory Coast together earn almost just less than $5 billion, whilst the chocolate industry alone, and not even factoring cosmetics, etc. The value is about $120 billion. And so we think that it's high time that we, we added value to our beans to get a lot more money out of what we grow and produce. GEPA is supporting ACCA because of mainly the support that it gives to cocoa and cocoa derivatives. We have been supporting so many other products and services and it is important that cocoa is also supported, everything that comes out of cocoa. And to do that, we need to showcase what we have. By working with GEPA, ACC is also basically aligning itself to the Africa Continental Free Trade Area Agreement, which we have all signed on to, and exposing itself to the wider market of Africa. So we think that it is in the right direction that we are working with ACC and other partners as well, as we are promoting all of these um, partners on the African market. My name is Efua Asabia Asari. It will please me immensely if you can be a part of the ACC, either as an exhibitor or as a spectator, or as a potential exporter or somebody who wants to know about the cocoa business. I'll be very pleased if you pass through. Thank you. The Know Your Cuckoo Foundation, or KYC, came about because we realized that there was a paucity and a lack of knowledge, really, about uh, cocoa in, in Ghana. When you look at it, we use just around 19% of the cocoa bean, so 81% of the cocoa tree is unutilized. So we thought that it was high time to be in a position to educate, to create events, to, to create the, the necessary platforms to develop cocoa knowledge and opportunities a lot further. The theme for this year's ACE event is Africa Beyond Beans. Currently, Ghana and the Ivory Coast together earn almost just 
less than $5 billion, whilst the chocolate industry alone, and not even factoring cosmetics, etc., the value is about $120 billion. And so we think that it's high time that we, we added value to our beans to get a lot more money out of what we grow and produce. GEPA is supporting ACCE because of mainly the support that it gives to cocoa and cocoa derivatives. We have been supporting so many other products and services and it is important that cocoa is also supported, everything that comes out of cocoa. And to do that, we need to showcase what we have. By working with GEPA, ACC is also basically aligning itself to the Africa Continental Free Trade Area Agreement, which we have all signed on to, and exposing itself to the wider market of Africa. So we think that it is in the right direction that we are working with ACC and other partners as well, as we are promoting all of these um, partners on the African market. My name is Efua Asabia Asari. It will please me immensely if you can be a part of the ACC, either as an exhibitor or as a spectator, or as a potential exporter or somebody who wants to know about the cocoa business. I'll be very pleased if you pass through. Thank you. The New York Cuckoo Foundation, or KYC, came about because we realized that there was a paucity and a lack of knowledge, really, about uh, cocoa in, in Ghana. When you look at it, we use just around 19% of the cocoa bean, so 81% of the cocoa tree is unutilized. So we thought that it was high time to be in a position to educate, to create events, to, to create the, the necessary platforms to develop cocoa knowledge and opportunities a lot further. The theme for this year's ACE event is Africa Beyond Beans. Currently, Ghana and the Ivory Coast together earn almost just less than $5 billion, whilst the chocolate industry alone, and not even factoring cosmetics, etc., the value is about $120 billion. And so we think that it's high time that we, we added value to our beans to get a lot more money out of what we grow and produce. GEPA is supporting ACCE because of mainly the support that it gives to cocoa and cocoa derivatives. We have been supporting so many other products and services and it is important that cocoa is also supported, everything that comes out of cocoa. And to do that, we need to showcase what we have. By working with GEPA, ACC is also basically aligning itself to the Africa Continental Free Trade Area Agreement, which we have all signed on to, and exposing itself to the wider market of Africa. So we think that it is in the right direction that we are working with ACC and other partners as well, as we are promoting all of these um, partners on the African market. My name is Efua Asabia Asari. It will please me immensely if you can be a part of the ACC, either as an exhibitor or as a spectator, or as a potential exporter or somebody who wants to know about the cocoa business. I'll be very pleased if you pass through. Thank you. The New York Cuckoo Foundation, or KYC, came about because we realized that there was a paucity and a lack of knowledge, really, about uh, cocoa in, in Ghana. When you look at it, we use just around 19% of the cocoa bean, so 81% of the cocoa tree is unutilized. So we thought that it was high time to be in a position to educate, to create events, to, to create the, the necessary platforms to develop cocoa knowledge and opportunities 
a lot further. The theme for this year's H event is Africa Beyond Beans. Currently, Ghana and the Ivory Coast together earn almost just less than five billion dollars, whilst the chocolate industry alone, and not even factoring cosmetics, etc., the value is about 120 billion dollars. And so we think that it's high time that we we added value to our beans to get a lot more money out of what we grow and produce. Gepa is supporting ACCE because of mainly the support that it gives to cocoa and cocoa derivatives. We have been supporting so many other products and services and it is important that cocoa is also supported, everything that comes out of cocoa. And to do that, we need to showcase what we have. By working with GEPA, ACC is also basically aligning itself to the Africa Continental Free Trade Area Agreement, which we have all signed on to, and exposing itself to the wider market of Africa. So we think that it is in the right direction that we are working with ACC and other partners as well, as we are promoting all of these um, partners on the African market. My name is Efua Asabia Asari. It will please me immensely if you can be a part of the ACC, either as an exhibitor or as a spectator, or as a potential exporter or somebody who wants to know about the cocoa business. I'll be very pleased if you pass through. Thank you. The Know Your Cuckoo Foundation, or KYC, came about because we realized that there was a paucity and a lack of knowledge, really, about uh, cocoa in, in Ghana. When you look at it, we use just around 19% of the cocoa bean, so 81% of the cocoa tree is unutilized. So we thought that it was high time to be in a position to educate, to create events, to, to create the, the necessary platforms to develop cocoa knowledge and opportunity.
about uh, cocoa in, in Ghana. When you look at it, we use just around 19% of the cocoa bean, so 81% of the cocoa tree is unutilized. So we thought that it was high time to be in a position to educate, to create events, to, to create the, the necessary platforms to develop cocoa knowledge and opportunities a lot further. The theme for this year's H event is Africa Beyond Beans. Currently, Ghana and the Ivory Coast together earn almost just less than five billion dollars, whilst the chocolate industry alone, and not even factoring cosmetics, etc., the value is about 120 billion dollars. And so we think that it's high time that we, we added value to our beans to get a lot more money out of what we grow and produce. The Know Your Cuckoo Foundation, or KYC, came about because we realized that there was a paucity and a lack of knowledge, really, about uh, cocoa in, in Ghana. When you look at it, we use just around 19% of the cocoa bean, so 81% of the cocoa tree is unutilized. So we thought that it was high time to be in a position to educate, to create events, to, to create the, the necessary platforms to develop cocoa knowledge and opportunities a lot further. The theme for this year's H event is Africa Beyond Beans. Currently, Ghana and the Ivory Coast together earn almost just less than five billion dollars, whilst the chocolate industry alone, and not even factoring cosmetics, etc. The value is about 120 billion dollars and so we think that it's high time that we we added value to our beans to get a lot more money out of what we grow and produce the know your cuckoo foundation or kyc came about because we realized that there was a paucity and a lack of knowledge really about uh, cocoa in, in Ghana. When you look at it, we use just around 19% of the cocoa bean, so 81% of the cocoa tree is unutilized. So we thought that it was high time to be in a position to educate, to create events, to, to create the, the necessary platforms to develop cocoa knowledge and opportunities a lot further. The theme for this year's H event is Africa Beyond Beans. Currently, Ghana and the Ivory Coast together earn almost just less than five billion dollars, whilst the chocolate industry alone, and not even factoring cosmetics, etc., the value is about 120 billion dollars. And so we think that it's high time that we, we added value to our beans to get a lot more money out of what we grow and produce. The Know Your Cuckoo Foundation, or KYC, came about because we realized that there was a paucity and a lack of knowledge, really, about uh, cocoa in, in Ghana. When you look at it, we use just around 19% of the cocoa bean, so 81% of the cocoa tree is unutilized. So we thought that it was high time to be in a position to educate, to create events, to, to create the, the necessary platforms to develop cocoa knowledge and opportunities a lot further. The theme for this year's H event is Africa Beyond Beans. Currently, Ghana and the Ivory Coast together earn almost just less than five billion dollars, whilst the chocolate industry alone, and not even factoring cosmetics, etc. The value is about 120 billion dollars and so we think that it's high time that we we added value to our beans to get a lot more money out of what we grow and produce
The Know Your Cuckoo Foundation or KYC came about because we realized that there was a paucity and a lack of knowledge really about uh, cocoa in, in Ghana. When you look at it, we use just around 19% of the cocoa bean, so 81% of the cocoa tree is unutilized. So we thought that it was high time to be in a position to educate, to create events, to, to create the, the necessary platforms to develop cocoa knowledge and opportunities a lot further. The theme for this year's H event is Africa Beyond Beans. Currently, Ghana and the Ivory Coast together earn almost just less than $5 billion, whilst the chocolate industry alone, and not even factoring cosmetics, etc. The value is about $120 billion. And so we think that it's high time that we, we added value to our beans to get a lot more money out of what we grow and produce. The Know Your Cuckoo Foundation or KYC came about because we realized that there was a paucity and a lack of knowledge really about uh, cocoa in, in Ghana. When you look at it, we use just around 19% of the cocoa bean, so 81% of the cocoa tree is unutilized. So we thought that it was high time to be in a position to educate, to create events, to, to create the, the necessary platforms to develop cocoa knowledge and opportunities a lot further. The theme for this year's H event is Africa Beyond Beans. Currently, Ghana and the Ivory Coast together earn almost just less than $5 billion, whilst the chocolate industry alone, and not even factoring cosmetics, etc. The value is about $120 billion. And so we think that it's high time that we, we added value to our beans to get a lot more money out of what we grow and produce. The Know Your Cuckoo Foundation or KYC came about because we realized that there was a paucity and a lack of knowledge really about uh, cocoa in, in Ghana. When you look at it, we use just around 19% of the cocoa bean, so 81% of the cocoa tree is unutilized. So we thought that it was high time to be in a position to educate, to create events, to, to create the, the necessary platforms to develop cocoa knowledge and opportunities a lot further. The theme for this year's H event is Africa Beyond Beans. Currently, Ghana and the Ivory Coast together earn almost just less than $5 billion, whilst the chocolate industry alone, and not even factoring cosmetics, etc. The value is about $120 billion. And so we think that it's high time that we, we added value to our beans to get a lot more money out of.
Ghana being a hub, as you know, even uh, Coco and uh, Mr. Chadong will be able to see our increase. Uh, as we take three percent or so um, annually to export migrex, this is how the yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, I think she's fixed, she's inverted the numbers. Yeah. We're actually yeah. 60, 60 plus exports in terms of Ghana, Ghana 30 and something. Yeah, together. but together we're close to 70. No way. Yeah, we're close to 60. I see. We have, have to check. We have to correct the data on because the online data can be completely misleading. Well, actually, Ghana mm -hmm. controls about 20%, 20 and Cote about 40%. So we put together. together. Bravo, bravo to Ghana and Cocoa. And so welcome once again to the African Cocoa, Africa Cocoa and Chocolate Fair. And like I said, I'm excited. This morning we're going to be looking at the very inception of this uh, expo, why it came about, why we're doing it, and how we're going to go about supporting it. It's a global event, and so if you've joined in, you, you have people from the United States, from America, we have the Chinese, uh, the Japanese joining, people from the UK, and all over the world. We want to build this. I'm going to be speaking to um, Dr. Percy, Dr. Kwisu Leslie, Director of Education for the African Cocoa and the Chocolate Festival. Hello, Doctor. Yes, How are you doing? I'm very well. Fantastic. Thank you. Thank you. Likewise. And also, uh, Mr. Alexander Dadja. Uh, he's the Director of Project Development for the Ghana and Cocoa Cocoa uh, Consortium. We also have Business Partners of Jay Sam. Director of Marketing Development for Marty Cocoa and Wolf Cocoa. Hello. Hi. <laughs> Great. Thank you. You're welcome. We're, we're glad to have you. And of course, we have Nana Ajibi. Uh, he's the co founder of ACCC and uh, Know Your Cocoa Foundation. He's also the Achiamintini of Chiapin and very instrumental in the coming together of us today here uh, for this event. Nana. Thank you so much for making it possible. Uh, you know, the attempt to expose cocoa to the world, to further expose cocoa to the world. Yes, indeed, we know that Ghana is a leading uh, producer of cocoa and water. And yet, when it comes to processing, we pack it. And that's why we have our friend Dadja to be on board to further, you know, expose us to the challenges we have and to also talk to you. But first of all, let's get to know how this came about and why we're here. I'd give um, Dr. Percy. Um, the opportunity to tell us about her background in terms of your contribution to African Cocoa. It's very interesting. Yeah, sure. Thank you so much. So I'm Dr. Christy Leslie, a researcher and director of the Global Cocoa Industry. My focus area is West Africa and the Cape Town area where I live. And I look at the politics and economics of the industry that I'm sitting here writing. And so when we first discussed this event two, um, several years ago, I was really happy to just elevating awareness of the, the importance of cocoa to Ghana's economy, but also to the world at large. Without Ghana, without West Africa, there would really be no global profit industry, um, profit lovers around the world would have much less to enjoy from the economy of West Africa and so it would. So for me, um, this event is really about elevating Thank you very much. Um, Mr. Dajal. Hello. Could you tell us a bit more about your participation? How can the public please be involved? Well, we're happy to be involved in uh, ACCE 21. Uh, we represent Ghana Export Promotion Authority, the nation's uh, premium uh, TPO, trade promotion organization, involved in the promotion and development of exports. And uh, cocoa uh, and cocoa products is the leading contributor to our non-traditional export revenue basket for many years. And so when the idea came that we have to organize and expose the cocoa sector to the world and how Ghana is leading in the revolution of the cocoa industry, it came to us as not surprise at all. Uh, the proposal was um, initiated by the Know Your Cocoa Foundation, um, whose chairman is Nana Aduna, and then he approached us way back in 2018 thereabouts with the idea, and we thought that it was good for us to partner. 
that's how come we have gone through the process. You've already said we had the first one, uh, the, the premier one in 20, 2019. And we thought of uh, actually continuing annually, but of course, COVID came in in 2020, so the process. But here we are, 2021. We're still determined to do the second edition. That's how come uh, it's live now globally. It's a kiddo. Is this a JSA? Yes, please. Yeah, taking from where my colleague are left to explain, as a PC board, as a PC organization, one of our key mandates is to develop and promote um, Ghana's research capacity. And so this activity whereby um, we want to promote the consumption and then the promotion of cocoa products falls directly in our lambic, in our I mean on our lab. And so it's one of our key activities to promote the research. And so as a CTO, um, we engage in different activities with um, um, the cocoa value chain. So right from those who do um, processed cocoa, like um, those who do cocoa beans, um, cocoa and liquor, cocoa butter, um, for further processing, we do work with them. And also with chocolate, those who are doing with cocoa um, and chocolate manufacturing, they are part of our key you know, uh, people to work with. And so this program is very important to us and it helps us to um, actually implement our strategy of um, promoting the cocoa value chain to the export market. I think early on we mentioned that between Ghana and Cote d'Ivoire, we produce almost 60% of the world's um, cocoa. And if we are just um, um, turning this out in its raw form, it means we are not making any gains. And so this program, one of the key objectives is to also um, talk about the immense, I mean, um, capacity in the uh, promotion and value addition of the cocoa chain. And so we believe that as our audience is global, uh, we'll be able to send the signal out there very quickly so that um, the attention is also taken on processed cocoa rather than just on the raw cocoa beans. Indeed, I say hi to the guys in the oh. office. Uh, I will thank you for making this happen. We believe that both of us need us to. We're not just going to support our colleagues, but we're going to support our own colleagues as well. Thank you very much. How do you? Uh, thank you very much. Yeah, I, I think that this this all came about. Uh, I am a cocoa farmer myself, and I got the opportunity right from the year two thousand two thousand and three. We went through this cocoa rehabilitation process where we declared that farms and cocoa should be. And I must commend our regulatory organization, Ghana Cocoa Board, for the excellent work that they do in terms of quality and in terms of, of, of keeping the, the value chain going. I think uh, what, what struck me, I was involved in a, a cocoa, cocoa sector strategy meeting with Cocoa Board in the year 2019, I think it was March 2019. What, what struck me very clearly was that our focus was on still very much on production and consumption of cocoa every day. But then there were all kinds of figures. I remember also at the time the Minister for Finance, Mr. Bruno Koriata, Senior at School, uh, was talking about how we just made the five billion between Ghana and the every we just made five billion out of the cocoa. Now uh, almost 120 billion. So it just struck me, and I mean I'm a farmer myself. Yes, we're struggling terms of getting income, maintaining our farm. So, of course, it became clearer that the real money was being made in the value addition. But when you looked around the continent, uh, I think apart from the Etioni, the uh, Eco Chocolate Show, which just started the 25th uh, of the in Nigeria, will be joining us later on, there was n there's no Pan-African platform where we can actually showcase what we do with cocoa apart from selling beans. So we thought that it was important to start to, to actually create a, a Pan-African event. So that's how come the, the concept of the, the Africa Cocoa and Chocolate Show came about. And do you think that after your first having this session with us and today with where we are today, you've made improvements in terms of refining the I territory think... you have? I think the improvements are enormous. The improvements are huge. 
I mean, we, 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 we have an arrangement with, with, with our partners and lead sponsors, the Danex Detroit, we put this event together. The first one was a physical one, uh, and within that, we made significant gains. I think the, the challenges with COVID, which have come with, with the illness, etc., but it's also changed our approach to things. So this, I mean, this being a global event where my brothers and sisters, for example, in Trinidad and Tobago, in Jamaica, in the diaspora, who've made significant contributions to this, this, this event, of course, South Africa, etc., can be here without being physically here. So in that respect, I mean, it's really grown. I mean, it's almost like an exponential growth in this short time. And we think that Africa needs to take its rightful place in the, the value chain and in the benefits that, that are to accrue from cocoa. I mean, just example again, in Europe, there are events like Chocoa, there are events like the Euro Chocolate Show. I mean, the South and, the South and Central Americans, they've been doing this for centuries as well. For, originally comes from there. You have festivals in Belize, in Mexico, in Brazil, etc. So it's high time Africa also took its rightful place in, in the celebration and the in the and the, the real getting the real value and the money out of cocoa. So that's the objective of this. This is a Jason. We want the real value and the money out of cocoa in the processing process, right? Right across of the farm. Um, in the last two years, how, how much advancement or progress would you say GEPA has you know, made with regards to this crop that is all important? Yes, um, cocoa is one of the key products in the um, non-traditional export portfolio. In fact, indeed, um, if you look at the cocoa, um, processed cocoa, you realize that they make more than 40% um, of what the exports um, as non-traditional uh, products. And so, in the last two years, um, we have come up with a strategy called the... Sorry, I need to take you back. I don't get this. I don't know if I, uh, others are yeah. um, in the same boat as I am. You're saying that the, the, the producers or the processors of cocoa mm -hmm. make 40% more than the farmers? Or No, no, no. no, okay. no. I'm talking about export earnings. Export earnings. Value so terms. The, the value in terms of uh, non-traditional exports. You know, with exports, we have the traditional exports, which include cocoa beans. But you know, those ones are... Uh, of the futures market, the prices are dictated for us. But when it comes to um, non traditional exports, and we've added more value to the cocoa beans, right? So it's not exporting just the cocoa beans, but exporting the derivatives and being fed up process, you know, into cocoa butter, cocoa paste, mm -hmm. and now also into chocolate and then cocoa um, drink. I mean, the, the, the lead, the lead, or the, the improvement we've made is that now the focus is shifting even to processing of um, chocolate. You know, at first, um, processed cocoa was just in cocoa butter and cocoa liquor. It is also sent out um, to factories for them to make chocolate. But if you look at the last two years or so, there are so many artisanal chocolate manufacturers who are doing uh, chocolate now. And some of them are also even doing traditional chocolate. And they are out there in the export market. And I'm happy to mention that in at least one Ghanaian company has a, full, um, a fully owned Ghanaian um, cocoa factory in uh, both the US and the Germany, which is something that was unthinkable. Right. Yes, it's something that we never thought that we could have um, one company in Ghana setting up a full cocoa processing company in two different countries, the US and the Germany. And so it's part of um, the inroads that we have made. If you look at our theme, which is uh, beyond cocoa beans, you know, raising a new generation of um, cocopreneurs. You know, so you see that the youth, they are usually not interested in uh, farming and related um, things like that. But since the last couple of years, the activities we've been doing, not just us alone, with our collaborators like Cocoa Board, now with Know Your Cocoa Foundation, and so many other um, organizations, is bringing a lot of um, attention to the immense benefits of engaging um, in the cocoa um, value chain. And so now we have a lot, of, a lot more youth getting into cocoa farming, getting into cocoa processing, getting into um, things like using cocoa to make um, cosmetics, using cocoa to do all kinds of things. 
And so, so much has been done in the last couple of years through the kind of activities we have done, albeit with our partners like Coco Ball, with New York Coco Foundation, and also the private sector. Indeed. Um, Mr. Dajawa, no. um, you are a project director of project. So I, would you give us an example of one of the projects under your, your management or your supervision that connects directly with what we're trying to do to celebrate Coco, to give it further exposure, <coughs> to promote it as a secondary yeah. product and not just, you know, the bees? Well, um, as said already, the cocoa sector is, um, is the key driver of non-traditional exports. Um, as my colleague indicated, altogether, the processed cocoa sector gives us annually $1.2 billion worth of non-traditional exports, which means it's quite significant. Uh, in terms of um, projects, we would say that um, already GEPA itself has a, an ongoing project which we call Youth in Exports. Um, program okay. uh, which aims to encourage the youth to take to agriculture as agribusiness and to um, develop the value chain not only the farming but also go on to do processing um, the hope is that when this matures uh, it's just been an, uh, one year since we launched the program and uh, a lot of um, interest is being shown by the youth in it uh, we were able to um, train about 20 youth at the moment who were attached to what we call mentors who have already done and succeeded in exports of primary products but also now uh, branching into processing. The idea is to bring this to the fore for the youth to be encouraged to also go into that. Right. So the African Cocoa and Chocolate Expo is one of the means by which we will try and expose the sector to the youth to be able to go in there. Even if they start with the artisanal, they will gradually go into the bigger way of processing. Mm -hmm. uh, another interesting thing is that we've observed that a lot of young female entrepreneurs are now beginning to take that challenge up and are going into cocoa processing. So our cocoa entrepreneurs are growing. And so the cocoa entrepreneurs are growing, <laughs> essentially. Uh, and then I will tell you how uh, some of them have also been hooked on to Big uh, expo and they are exhibitors and one would see some of the wonderful products that they have on display uh, over the next three three days of or so and so uh, it's a growing area and and the revolution is up and up and doing so we would encourage uh, everybody who is interested to come on board because coco is uh, we would say almost Ghana but uh, the tertiary processing of cocoa is what we are looking for right. and government has also put in place a lot of um, policies that uh, indicate that we can industrialize our country through value addition and that is the way to go and so by this um, expo we are sensitizing the general public ghana and but beyond ghana also the international community to invest in ghana's cocoa sector you know, even though Ghana is the second uh, largest uh, producer exporter of cocoa, we have the premium cocoa. Uh, cocoa is the most, um, uh, what do you call it? Uh, the, best quality. the best quality and the best flavor in the world. And so no chocolate is made without addition of some cocoa beans from Ghana. And that is a fact. So even though we may not be the biggest, but we are the premium, as it, as it were. And if Ghana has a premium, then the, the value addition should start from here. And that is the, one of the reasons why we are organizing this event, uh, to bring the, the advantages and the benefits of the cocoa sector to uh, the global community and also invite investments into, into the into country. Ghana to contribute yes. to the um, Would you just take a moment and let the young people out there who may be interested in your project, um, the processes, how they can participate <clears throat> register well, just a minute well we we had ended the the pilot stage and we are yet to launch the second phase which will be coming up pretty soon we will advertise nationally in the dailies and okay. on various media so those who will be interested uh, can um, uh, apply uh, to join uh, it's, it's a rigorous process because we want people who are really interested in that sector That's in right. agriculture and agro processing but not just any youth and so those who are really enthusiastic and have the ambition to become 
agri business and cocoa preneurs are the ones that uh, will be uh, selected. But we would uh, inform the general public uh, very soon. And this will be publicized widely for people to apply. Thank you. I hope that down the road we can have some references so that potential, um, what you call it, youth who are interested can yes. educate themselves ahead. Speaking of education, Dr. Leslie, yeah. uh, what's there to educate us about cocoa? We know we produce cocoa. We know we have the best quality beans. And so what? Um, it's, it's a great question. And where, what do we need to educate ourselves about cocoa now? I think it really is this issue of value addition and the tremendous possibility of creating something out of cocoa that is innovative and exciting and future oriented. And I'll just, I'll just share a, a little story. In, in the late 90s, I was living in Benin and as a very passionate chocolate lover myself, was very sad that there weren't very many chocolate items available for me um, in my village. And on my holidays from work, I would come to Ghana and they had uh, the fan ice in a chocolate version here. Mm -hmm. And of course, King's Bite, um, our, our famous golden tree brand here. And I was very happy to have these chocolate options visiting Ghana. This was more than 20 years ago. Now, today, there are literally hundreds of products that I can enjoy as a chocolate lover, as a cocoa lover. I feel like every day I find a new company, I find a new individual, a new entrepreneur. Here in Ghana? Here in Ghana, who is creating something out of cocoa. And that innovation is happening right here. And the products that we have are truly African inspired. They are really homegrown. And um, for me, that's one of the most exciting educational opportunities we have is to showcase these really lovely products that even teach me something about cocoa and I've been studying this industry for many years I'm learning something new every time I interact with one of these products every time I taste one I engage with cocoa in a new way I engage with chocolate in a new way and you know 20 years ago we couldn't have done the African Cocoa and Chocolate Expo now you know we, we don't have enough space to showcase everything that's you speak happening. so passionately about cocoa and, uh, and chocolate so just highlight one or two products that you've discovered in the last three years or so that's, that excites you, that makes you see that indeed we're getting there. I will really have to start with the Cocoa Crunch. That was one of my first encounters when I um, came to, to live in Ghana uh, uh, three or four years ago, which um, is an Oheni Cocoa product, which takes the nibs and makes them into um, like a, a nib-based brittle, we might call it, or a crunch that has just the, the experience of cocoa, and I think Nana can, can tell us more about this product really? since it's his own invention. <laughs> <laughs> I don't and know about this He one. knows how very much I love it, and I've bought um, many, many, many of these French bars from him. Nana, do you know, how long have you had this product? And I, I, how think, come it's I, not, I, I, I think that I would, I, would, I would veer away from that and not start to promote or any cocoa on this. So let, let's focus on <laughs> let, See, let, now, this is let's interesting. Focus. I, I <laughs> Very interesting because we're talking about cocoa products, innovative cocoa products. And if Ohini products happens to be one, why not? Because I'm, I'm interested in this product. But I guess we'll bring it to more details later. Yes, yeah, yes, we'll definitely. Fish, fish everything definitely. Out. We, have, you know, we have so many. That's one I happen to enjoy a lot because it gives me a different experience of cocoa. But, you know, there are many different, um, different bars that I think are truly exciting to me because they add inclusions of um, local ingredients mm. moringa for example which you know growing up in Where america have I been? is not something i would have seen <laughs> yeah. right you know so hibiscus flavors yep. um, things that are really local ingredients local yep. products that um, tell us a different story about cocoa and um, allow us to experience cocoa and chocolate in, in really innovative ways Indeed, it appears we have a lot to learn. A lot. Yeah. There's a lot happening. There's a reason for your designation. <laughs> <laughs> so, Nana, um, now that we're here, we've actually set the platform to have the, the, the conversations and to also to look for solutions to, you know, making sure that there's funding and whatnot to achieve the objective of making sure that added value brings us more money. How are we going to approach this? How are you going to make sure that we get the necessary funding? 
I, I think that, again, uh, thank you very much for that question. The, 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 the key is not even just funding. I think that once people have, fortunately, again, in this instance, we have the raw material, we have the good quality raw material in abundance. I think the key to unlocking the changes that we want is in the theme Africa Beyond Beans is getting the Instagram generation, getting the younger, brighter minds, getting the university students, getting the entrepreneurs playing around and doing thing, different things with Koku. Then we would have started to turn the tide. And what would motivate them to want to do this? I, I think that is... Remember that's they the, want the $3,000 Yes, but, but, but the, I, we, we, we just take a very typical practical example. I mean, I'm sorry to say this, but we talk a lot about uh, Tetekwashi who made the industry uh, in terms of the farming industry what it is. But then we turn around and we talk about the family of Cadbury's and mm -hmm. Mondelez. I mean, just look at the in income and name, dispar name, name disparity. Mm -hmm. I mean, but the point, the whole objective is that We've been sticking to the farming side of things. The younger generation, the Instagram generation, the Facebook generation, etc. I mean, there are different opportunities and different things, whether it's Coco Futures Trading, whether it is making your own cosmetic line, whether it is making... And, and of course, again, we will discuss this somewhere in the, in, the, in, the, in the program, how to present your packaging, looking for financial options, partnerships, etc. There's a whole range of things that we can start to do differently with Koku by ourselves, for ourselves. And of course, one must add the huge opportunity that is presented with the Africa Continental Free Trade Agreement. I mean, the, 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 the continent is open. I mean, there is China that incidentally is looking... Uh, for products from us in terms of the Africa uh, cocoa market in Hunan, China, and I must uh, give credit to the former ambassador, uh, Ghanaian ambassador to China, Mr. Edward Boating, for getting that initiative going. So there's just so much. There's just so much that we can do and do things differently. And we don't expect A the world exactly. We don't expect the. Tired aged farmer, and incidentally, unfortunately, the average age of cocoa farmer in Ghana is about 56 or 57 years. We don't expect them to be making the value addition and transition. Mm -hmm. No. We rather expect a new generation to start to see the opportunities differently and mm -hmm. take them on. As a media practitioner, it would have been great for me to be seeing the different kinds of chocolate and cocoa products on the market. Mm -hmm. As in, you know, when you turn on the TV, we should know that these products are in, in existence. Would you say that the products that you, some of the products that you're excited about, that you've been talking about, marketing, sporting, um, do not have uh, in, uh, an interest in the local market? Why they're not showcasing them to us? Why they are sending them outside and not on the shelves in our shops? Thanks. And on the contrary, I think there's now a lot of awareness created for our local products, including um, cocoa based products. In fact, um, if you look at our cosmetic industry, together with Shevagan, I mean, cocoa product is beginning to feature a lot. In fact, these days, um, a lot more young people and even grown-ups are all using made in Ghana products. And then maybe after this program, um, at this particular place, we have an aspiration wall right, right behind you here, where you see different um, um, cocoa, processed cocoa products from the cosmetics through to food, and even the pharmaceutical industry, there are different um, things that are being done with our chocolates and with our um, cocoa products. And then I want to say that a lot of these small companies are owned by young people. That's the good thing about mm. it. Many of them are very young people, and they are university students. Some young, of them, la young ladies. Young mm. ladies. Mm. A lot of them are women. Yeah. Some of them have just come out, out of school with engineering background with a chemical engineering and all that. And they are all now so seriously into our cosmetics. Ex experimenting. Or These experimenting. are stories to be told. Yes, and so um, there are a number of them who are very young. And we want to keep on um, promoting this um, story because we have found out that using our local products is better on our skin. It's better in our stomachs. And so 
once and every day, I try to take a cup of um, cocoa drink. And I've seen that it's making me less ill than in the past. And these are all things I got to know from the kind of work we've been doing, also with our partners. And there's someone from Cocoa Board, Dr. Ampofu, who always sends information of the immense benefit of drinking cocoa. And I believe that we need to continue telling the story so that our programs, it is not always tea and coffee break. It could also be tea and cocoa break. Because we know um, or coffee and cocoa break because we also export or produce coffee. But uh, I think that we need to put more emphasis on the cocoa, which is giving us the money. The cocoa, which is giving us all the best of health. And so the, the, the promotion has started, but we need to up it up so that more people begin to use cocoa as food, cocoa as um, cosmetics, and ultimately help to um, uh, be in a pharmaceutical basket in that the more cocoa you take, the less um, medications you need. So I think it has started, and the youth are involved. Cocoa is food, cocoa is health, yeah. cocoa is not um, just nice. Can I just come yes, in please, please. Cocoa is beauty, <laughs> right. we like that. <laughs> yeah, I, I just want to chip in uh, because I know our time is almost up. Um, at the policy level, your policy is also very important uh, to inform all of us that <clears throat> the Ghana Export Promotion Authority under the auspices of the Ministry of Trade has um, formulated a national export development strategy. Uh, for the next 20 years, sorry, for the next 10 years, mm -hmm. under which we um, have the objective of, you know, um, raking in $25 billion worth of non-traditional exports. In the revenue. next 10 years. In the next mm -hmm. 10 years. And cocoa uh, value-added products constitutes the key, actually the priority of the priority products that we have. Uh, because of the potential that exists there, and implementation has already started. And uh, Ghana Export Promotion is coordinating that implementation. So there are a number of uh, activities that have been lined up uh, for the next, you know, decade that will see a lot more growth. You know, not only in cocoa-based products, but many other products, 17 of them in total. And um, we have already begun also the sensitization and education uh, of all Ghanaians to focus their attention on the implementation of the strategy in the, seven key, in the 11, 17 key products that I talked about. We don't have time to go through all of them, but suffice it to say that cocoa-based products are the, are the top. And so a lot of efforts are going to be put in there. Already we have also had an interest from the International Trade Center in Geneva to partner GEPA once again to look specifically at value-added cocoa going forward. And so we are going to see a lot of progress in that respect. And if we keep at doing uh, this uh, expo annually is part of the sensitization and information uh, dissemination processes that will lead to a lot more people getting aware and knowing the values that this cocoa industry holds for us. As, I, as, I, as we said from the beginning, it is worth about $100 billion worth, you know, annually, globally, the trade in, uh, in tertiary cocoa. <laughs> yeah, $100 billion. Yeah. And unfortunately, I was just reading um, a report on Ghana Web today mm -hmm. That shows that Ghana uh, holds only 3.4% of the global trade in cocoa powder, for example, mm -hmm. even though mm -hmm. we control 20% of the world production. How does that work? So mm -hmm. it's a gradual process. As the His Excellency the President has always kept saying, we need to go beyond this and industrialize the country. And so that's ambition. And together, I'm sure that when we work at it, we'll be able to go quite far in this. Indeed. indeed. Yeah. Thank you very much for this um, insight into what, the, what GEPA is doing in collaboration. So um, I just want to say that we, we appreciate um, you joining us for this session. We've been talking about the inception of the Accra Cocoa and Chocolate Expo and uh, talking about how Ghana can actually achieve its objective of enhancing the cocoa, the cocoa beans into mm -hmm. secondary products that can be exported. And um, I've learned myself that there's so many innovative uh, products currently uh, on the Ghanaian market, which I'll be making it my business to look for yeah. and also patronize. Thank you for joining us. Um, Dr. Christy Leslie, she's a Director of Education for the ACCE, um, Mr. Alexander Dajawa. He's a Director of Projects for GEPA, and uh, Mrs. Um, Agnes Gifty, a JSAM, a Director of Marketing Development and also Market Promotion again for GEPA. And we have 
the co-founder of ACC, Nana Eduna, um, also uh, the Achiamehene of the Piapim traditional area, the cocoa farmer himself. Very important. Very important. Thanks Thank again. Um, please don't go off. You know, we're having different sessions at various times. And so stay with us and connect. And we'll explore the world of cocoa and how we can make it better for all of us. Stay Thank you. That's my name. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, my excitement is with these products. Um, <laughs> I'm hoping yeah. that uh, mm -hmm. yeah. okay. we can no, get to works. learn more about the, the yeah. products yeah. as we go. Yeah, you can even say Accra. Yeah. Yes. Okay. Yeah. 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 of the cocoa bean so 81 percent of the cocoa tree is unutilized so we thought that it was high time to be in a position to educate to create events to, to create the, the necessary platforms to develop cocoa knowledge and opportunities a lot further the theme for this year's H event is Africa Beyond Beans. Currently, Ghana and the Ivory Coast together earn almost just less than $5 billion, whilst the chocolate industry alone, and not even factoring cosmetics, etc., the value is about $120 billion. And so we think that it's high time that we, we added value to our beans to get a lot more money out of what we grow and produce. Gepa is supporting ACCE because of mainly the support that it gives to cocoa and cocoa derivatives. We have been supporting so many other products and services and it is important that cocoa is also supported, everything that comes out of cocoa. And to do that, we need to showcase what we have. By working with GEPA, ACCE is also basically aligning itself to the Africa Continental Free Trade Area Agreement, which we have all signed on to, and exposing itself to the wider market of Africa. So we think that it is in the right direction that we are working with ACC and other partners as well, as we are promoting all of these um, partners on the African market. My name is Efua Asabia Asari. It will please me immensely if you can be a part of the ACC, either as an exhibitor or as a spectator, or as a potential exporter or somebody who wants to know about the cocoa business. I'll be very pleased if you pass through. Thank you. The Know Your Cuckoo Foundation or KYC came about because we realized that there was a paucity and a lack of knowledge really about uh, cocoa in, in Ghana. When you look at it, we use just around 19% of the cocoa bean, so 81% of the cocoa tree is unutilized. So we thought that it was high time to be in a position to educate, to create events, to, to create the, the necessary platforms to develop cocoa knowledge and opportunities a lot further. The theme for this year's H event is Africa Beyond Beans. Currently, Ghana and the Ivory Coast together earn almost just less than $5 billion, whilst the chocolate industry alone, and not even factoring cosmetics, etc., the value is about $120 billion. And so we think that it's high time that we, we added value to our beans to get a lot more money out of what we grow and produce. GEPA is supporting ACCE because of mainly the support that it gives to cocoa and cocoa derivatives. We have been supporting so many other products and services and it is important that cocoa is also supported, everything that comes out of cocoa. And to do that, we need to showcase what we have. By working with GEPA, 
ACC is also basically aligning itself to the Africa Continental Free Trade Area Agreement, which we have all signed on to, and exposing itself to the wider market of Africa. So we think that it is in the right direction that we are working with ACC and other partners as well, as we are promoting all of these um, partners on the African market. My name is Efua Asabia Asari. It will please me immensely if you can be a part of the ACC, either as an exhibitor or as a spectator, or as a potential exporter or somebody who wants to know about the cocoa business. I'll be very pleased if you pass through. Thank you. The Know Your Cuckoo Foundation or KYC came about because we realized that there was a paucity and a lack of knowledge really about uh, cocoa in, in Ghana. When you look at it, we use just around 19% of the cocoa bean, so 81% of the cocoa tree is unutilized. So we thought that it was high time to be in a position to educate, to create events, to, to create the, the necessary platforms to develop cocoa knowledge and opportunities a lot further. The theme for this year's ACE event is Africa Beyond Beans. Currently, Ghana and the Ivory Coast together earn almost just less than $5 billion, whilst the chocolate industry alone, and not even factoring cosmetics, etc., the value is about $120 billion. And so we think that it's high time that we, we added value to our beans to get a lot more money out of what we grow and produce. GEPA is supporting ACCE because of mainly the support that it gives to cocoa and cocoa derivatives. We have been supporting so many other products and services and it is important that cocoa is also supported, everything that comes out of cocoa. And to do that, we need to showcase what we have. By working with GEPA, ACC is also basically aligning itself to the Africa Continental Free Trade Area Agreement, which we have all signed on to, and exposing itself to the wider market of Africa. So we think that it is in the right direction that we are working with ACC and other partners as well, as we are promoting all of these um, partners on the African market. My name is Efua Asabia Asari. It will please me immensely if you can be a part of the ACC, either as an exhibitor or as a spectator, or as a potential exporter or somebody who
Except from John Joseph Dupuy's book, The Journalist of the Residents in Asante, it was commissioned by the British Crown to mediate the route between Cape Coast and Asante. And it was published in 1854. Dupuy described Coco as a place called Coco in as far back as 1824, which is incidentally about 200 years. The Dutch had tried to grow Coco in the Gold Coast in 1815 but failed. The Basel missionary successfully grew Coco in. 1840. That's the connection with the Japanese and Adu Danka first. Incidentally, at the time, Koko or chocolate was already big in Europe in the 1800s. So they needed a source that was close to Europe. And closer than South and Central America, where there is no growth. Jacob Ajat 
Tete and Tete Pati, interestingly named in the history of the Coco. In 1822, Amelado Coco was grown on the island of Principe. In 1830, Coco was being grown in Sao Tome, and by 1830, it had also spread to Fernando Po. The Portuguese were using slave labor, though slavery had been banned by then, but the Portuguese were still using slave labor in Sao Tome, Principe, Fernando Po area. Jacob, Tete Aja, and Tete Kwashi were sent to Fernando Po in 1879. And incidentally, the first cocoa from the Gold Coast, which was just 80 pounds or 36 kilograms, was exported from the Gold Coast in 1891. The next slide shows a very interesting guard dance called Gome. In the picture, you see three young garmen, and this picture was taken as far back in 1906 in an area called Boa in Cameroon. The Basel missionaries had cocoa and coffee plantations in the south of Cameroon, a place called Amazonia, in Equatorial Guinea, in Fernando Po, and in, which is now Bioko Island. And what they did was they recruited young garmen from Accra to go and provide labor on those farms. Three of these young men are pictured in this slide. And when they came back, there was a celebration and a dance called Gome, which was very popular at that time in Accra. And Tete Kwashi and Aja Tete, incidentally, were some of these men who went to that part of West Africa. The next slide shows a very interesting pictorial of the impact and the influence of women in cocoa and chocolate as far back as the 1900s, early 1900s, where we see these strong West African women carrying these heavy bags of cocoa on their heads. It shows how important women have been all this time in Coco. And these pictures are from the Basel Mission Archive. In the Gold Coast, the Coco boom export started 1891. First bag or first exports, 36 kilograms. By 1913, within 20 years, the Gold Coast was the world's largest producer of Coco producing cocoa of 40,000 tons. By 1923, the harvest had reached over 200,000 tons. By 1936, the harvest was 311,000 tons. This stood until after independence. It's ironic that this year we've had the highest 1 million metric tons over produced by the Ghana cocoa. The Manguasi boycotts of the 1938s, the holdups were influenced by the 1924, 1930, 1931 holdings, holdups in the Gold Coast. The picture shows the Manguasi shed, which is actually still in existence now as we speak. It's also interesting that. These, in these influences and these incidences were around the time when the Federation of Cocoa Commerce was formed in the United Kingdom, which was in 1929. In 1937, the Mangwa Sea boycotts again. The largest firms at the time that were buying cocoa in the Gold Coast were Cadbury's and United African Company, and they initiated an agreement regarding the terms of cocoa purchasing. Ultimately, 13 firms 
comprising 94% of cocoa purchases in the Gold Coast, joined the agreement initiated by Cadbury's and UAC. The firms felt that, at the time, the African brokers were abusing their power as they would often demand advances from the farmers and get large profits. To reduce the power of the brokers, the firms agreed that they would set prices to lessen competition. Formation of the Ghana uh, Cocoa Market, oh, sorry, formation of the Cocoa Marketing Board at the time, the CMB. Disagreements between the European buyers and the local brokers and the farmers of a price led to boycotts and the burning of cocoa in 1937. These boycotts spread as far back, as far as field as Nigeria. The governor at the time, Governor Hudson, intervened and set up the Noel Commission. This led to the formation of the Cocoa Marketing Board in 1947-48 to regulate the price of cocoa for the British industry. The CMB, which is a precursor of the Ghana Cocoa Board, follows suit in 1984. Our next slide represents our founder, or some people would like to say founders, a very important pivotal role in the cocoa story of the Gold Coast of Ghana, Kwame Nkrumah. Kwame Nkrumah took advantage of cocoa exports from Ghana and the Gold Coast, and almost all the infrastructure that Kwame Nkrumah built was based on revenue from cocoa exports. Very interesting slide, the Black Star Line ship. At the time, this shows a picture of the SS Tunnel, which had just done its maiden trip to New York. The SS Tunnel landed in Brooklyn and on board was 3,444 tons, of which 2,000 tons of that was cocoa. Some of the produce was also taken from Nigeria. So at the time, Ghana actually not only produced cocoa, we transported our own cocoa in our own ship, and we sent them overseas to export it, so we controlled everything and we earned a fair bit of money. The last slide, we say thank you to Osadio. But what we must ask ourselves is, when we had so much control, what do we have to show for what we have now? Thank you very much.
He is our great grandfather, and uh, he was born in Osu and brought up in Osu. But our great grandfather, Tete Hamri, who knew my name is Richard Mate We are in Mampong, that's the Tekwashi house. This is the Kwashi, he is our great grandfather, and uh, he was born in Osu. And brought up in the city by our great grandfather Tete Hamri, who named Tete Kwashi. Tete Kwashi is supposed to bear Hammond, but he died early. When the name Hamri was changed to Hammond by the missionary, he was born in 1842 and died in 1892. So he was 50 years. Well, um, when he was brought up by the father that the Hamri as a blacksmith in Osu. On the age of 27 years, he traveled with some of the steamship. The old man gave him to one of the mission steamship. Because sometimes the wind of the same sea will blow. So we need a blacksmith in the ship. So he left and went to Fernando Po. No one knew where he went, but he went to Fernando Po. So after five years, the old man was angry when the missionary came back. He said, Where's my son? So I'll bring him back. He said, Bring him back. He's five years. So he came back at the age of 32 years. He spent five years there and he brought some cocoa pot and then a few inside a two box. Then when he came, well, he showed the old man. The old man said, Well, you can plant it. He planted some at the zoo. He didn't do well. They have to quickly get over to Mampong. The same old man. They have a house in Mampong. So the Tekwashi have to come down to Mampong to establish the blacksmith business here in Mampong. He didn't come to big cocoa business. He came to blacksmith. But when he planted the cocoa, it was doing well. So he had to clear all the blacksmith and fix the cocoa farm. That's how he made it. People coming in. And today the cocoa beans to a lot of farmers in the eastern region, he suffered. He started buying. After nursing them growing, he started buying the seed. Small, 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 small. That's how he made Ghana. Well, the cocoa around were brought by the Basel Mission in Acropong. But they don't do well. They don't do well at all. So when his home was planted in Mampong, it was doing well. So actually, the Basel Mission cocoa was defeated. But the Kwashi was a serious man. His, his own cocoa was growing very well. And that's how it spread up. This cocoa spread up the whole of Ghana. The first export of cocoa. Why the export came on? The, 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 the cocoa growing in this area, the Mampong, was growing very large. And then uh, they had to show the beans, call the, the governor. They should come down and see we have a lot of beans here. Then they came. I think they get almost about five bags or four bags, according to history. And then they took it down. Then it was exported by a company uh, from England, I think. Uh, yeah, they took, took it away four bags. So now, when they came back now, they said, well, we have to push this forward, people to plant more cocoa. And they were so serious. So I think the next year, it might go almost about 20 to 30 bags. That's how, coming to 19th century, the cocoa has grown more in Ghana. And they give Ghana more money. That it was first Ghana backbone. Cocoa is so important in Ghana. It's not because maybe Ghana is bringing money, but uh, uh, it has really helped Ghana to come out. It has helped individuals, the farmers, the, the, the country itself. And even if you go to the outside world, the countries that buy cocoa more, the Switzerland, the Germans, the British, the Americans, the Americans love chocolate so much. So, cocoa is really backbone of Ghana. Ghana have to respect the washi and respect the cocoa because he made it. People have come and rely on the, um, the blacksmith in Mampong. People have died. But there's a spirit that controls that look at this picture and go ahead the cocoa. We have one of our grandfather. J.W. Hammond, 
he took over the farm business and some of the family people. They took over the farm and they were extended more and more. They didn't give up. They, they, they continue in the farming. So that name, they have the name because they, where he bought the land and planted, it's still the question, land. So that name goes along with J.W. Hammond, who continue the process, process until the governor now saw that the Ghana is making money, let's award maybe the person. He said, this was the question who brought the cocoa. He was not a lazy man. He continued. These are the, the family that continue from 1893, 94, 95, that time. And the governor well, awarded the family, the Kwachi family, 250 pounds. It might be a huge money. It was shared all among the family. Some old women were so happy. They kept, it had been coming on and on and on. During the colonial times, they, the governor respected the family so much. They gave them daily money. But after the governors have left, uh, Dr. Kwame Nkrumah makes some purpose documents, and we have it. This, this family should be helped, and they should be scholarships. And they were doing it, but it, it, it has stopped. And uh, what we get small is from Cocoa Board. If you come to see the house is crumbling. Mampun, the house is old. We need maybe the government can lift up the house and then maybe take scholarship for the family. We don't see. And we always try little by little, but maybe one day the government will help the family. Yes. We still maintain the farm as the Kwashi farm by the family. The farm today have the, the old cocoa trees, some are there, and about 100 years, they are still there. The new ones are planted in. And the uh, cocoa border have been maintained nicely, you know. And then the national uh, tourism board uh, built museum, but nothing that shows uh, uh, attractive. The farm has to be innovative, look more attractive. And one we have is uh, at the farm is it for, for tourist book. My name is Richard Matthew Hammond. Give them daily money. Scholarship for the family, we don't see, and we always try a little bit. It's, it is hidden in Mampong, but if there can be a place, there can be a big vision, more attractive. My name is Richard Matthew. Yes, there's a room behind me that is room, that's the master room, a big room in the hall, that's where he stays, all of them. So most of the family people live in the soup, so whenever they come, this is the whole compound. Some stays, they come and stay like one week, two weeks, then he goes back and come back to him again. So that's where he stays. And he sells his tools. I have a store there. We sell those blacksmith tools, cutlasses, everything. He's a good blacksmith. If the question, being alive today, I think he could have art. Have a chocolate factory, maybe a lot of cocoa exports. He could have been a millionaire. When he was in Fernando Po, I think it was cocoa powder there. Because the, the ships from the Portugal and Spain, they buy the cocoa. And the powder have been, have been using there. And that's how it came more effective to him that this thing must come to Ghana. Because he's a Ghanaian. So when he came back, Glav just snow it, but he came back with the cocoa. And uh, through his legacy, even not even Ghana, West Africa, Cote d'Ivoire, Nigeria, all the cocoa, they are not doing well through cocoa. Yes, yes. In, in some way, 1940, Nigeria was doing well in cocoa, very well. But the oil is slow down. We, we, we feel sometimes a little bit bitter uh, about the family being rejected. The government, we hear about chocolate, chocolate, chocolate. Uh, but there's some company like uh, the CEO of Cocoa Marketing Board uh, have in mind of the question. But you don't see anything. I tell you, the house is crumbling. Mud house. And also, also, we want the house, mud house. After now. That's where we feel the pains. I have to say this. 
and then the, the world have to know because uh, even Guinness, they pay them. They have a record. They in in Accra here, they pay them quite a lot of money. We don't get anything. So that's, that's our pain. The Kwashi is the grandfather of Coco, which have made Ghana a great nation. He worked hard on the Coco. And when people to know that Coco is good to the country, we make Ghana green. But where is the founder today? Who knows him? He has no even legacy. No museum. Even his house is crumbling. But he worked hard to make Ghana great through the cocoa industry. What are we saying? You have to thank him in the grave or for his family. Here we are in the Tetekwashi farm. The farm which is the first place that he came and he planted. But in nursing the seed that they're planting them, the serious man who always works in his farm, he's a black man. He does both work. But he's been so serious on the farm that I'm showing you that's one of the old trees. And the one from is farm. First farm. We have only one farm. That's where we are. We was on this farm. We died. The last thing I want to show you is this farm standing. Yes, spirit after the Kwashi. Truly farming made Koko to be a Ghana's backbone. He worked hard. That's my great grandfather, and I love him. And also, we are going to look at how we can progress in the field beyond. And so, our focus is Africa beyond beans. Africa wants to go beyond beans. We want to be known for not just exporting beans, but also exporting bean products, secondary products as well. Um, I'm excited to have a cross section of people from. Uh, the industry um, stakeholders from GEPA, uh, Mr. Zachary Banda, 
the deputy director for manufactured products, uh, Ghana Export Limited. So you know he'll be taking us into a world of cocoa products um, in Ghana and possibly Africa as well. And we're looking at Madame Ella Mel Melkedze. Have I got it right? Melkedze. Melkizedek. Melkizedek. Madame Della Melkizedek, Ghana Tourism Authority. My first question was, so Coco and tourism, how do they relate? But then she's exposed it. And so hopefully she'll let you know how Coco and tourism relates as well. And why it's important that tourism is part of this platform as we talk about Coco and uh, uh, Also, Madame Della Kweke, Kweke Austin. Madame Della Kweke Austin. Now she's exposed me also to a whole new association in Ghana at the moment, the Cocoa Value Addition Artisans Association of Ghana, COVA, Cocoa Value Addition Artisans Association of Ghana, to tell us their aims and objectives and why the Africa Cocoa and Chocolate Expo platform is important. Um, also, we're talking to Mr. Kenneth Sayam Koko. Uh, he's a senior public affairs officer for Cocoa Board. I'm happy to have you. It, it's been a while since uh, I met my colleague, video practitioner, exactly. and he's departed and doing a whole new thing and telling me that Coco has made huge progress. I want to congratulate Coco Board for um, making that huge stride as from a, 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 million, a million to 1.45. You give us a big Well, I must say that Coco Board uh, over the years has been making a lot of strides and trying to ensure that the Coco. And because of this uh, industry resonates and participates a number of the activity and action programs. When we say this, we are trying to talk about programs that will ensure that we have sustainable cocoa standards. By this, we realize that over the years, about 40% of the cocoa shipping stores in Ghana were either defeated or they were not producing so they would say uh, they are less attractive. So all these are uh, Now, if we look at the range between 2010, 2011, to 2020, 2021, there has been some kind of uh, marginal increase in terms of production. 2010, 11, I give us 1,024,000. Delacueke Austin and currently the interim vice president of the newly formed association of um, artisans in the cocoa and chocolate industry. So we are the Cocoa Value Addition Artisans Association of Ghana for short, COVAC. And um, if Ghana has been in this industry, cocoa industry for um, close to a century, then Cocoa Boy should have grandchildren and great grandchildren by now. So <laughs> Kovac is one of the great grandchildren of Cocoa Board. And we are Ghanaian nonprofit business association duly incorporated 
under the Ghana Companies Act 2019. Our vision, our vision of the vision of COVAC is to promote the development and growth of small and medium scale cocoa and chocolate um, entrepreneurs, okay, through the improvement of members' businesses and the creation of synergies among members. What's our mission? Our mi the mission of COVAG is to enhance the businesses of members through technical capacity building, through service provision, promotion of business development linkages, and adherence to the regulatory standards of Cocoa Board and other regulatory um, entities in Ghana. When you travel beyond um, Ghana, you go to Europe, the Americas, Asia, so you see um, pockets of little cocoa artisans in every corner. And they don't have beans. So if you're talking about Africa beyond beans, when I was in Belgium, I saw that every nook and crook of Belgium had a chocolatier there. Meanwhile, you walk through Ghana, we have the beans, we don't have those kind of, you know, entrepreneurs. So, Kovac, the membership, and yes, the nation now realizes that. The big industries are doing well, have done well, are doing well, but without the artisans, we can't touch communities much with what we can do with cocoa. And so COVAC members do a variety of products. Some are into cosmetics, some are into... Did you know that cocoa butter was used as, as one of the key ingredients for suppositories? Mm. Yes. And so we have cocoa wine, one of which is sitting right here. Some of our members are into it. We have cocoa snack bars. Do you know that cocoa nips can be eaten as granite if you mix it up with other healthy? Exactly. So basically, COVAC is seeking to expose us to the various products that members of the association have. Exactly. And this is just the platform. This is just the platform. Chocolate is just the ultimate. But before you get to chocolate, there are a lot of potential yes, yes. healthy products, byproducts that we can use and get economic and commercial value from it. And that's why COVAC is here. Uh, he's the co-founder of this expo, uh, the African Cocoa Education Forum, along with the Royal Cocoa Foundation. He's also the education champion for the Japan traditional Again, yeah, a cocoa farmer, that's my favorite <laughs> title. Dr. Cocoa Farmer, yes. <laughs> Tana, I want to know what your, we've had discussions earlier uh, on the essence of cocoa. And of course, that gives me some insight into why we found the need to but your, from your opinion, why do you think, uh, what, what, what's the state of the industry? And why do you think there's this, the need for this industry? Uh, first and foremost, I must defer to my interim vice president. Yeah, I'm also a member of uh, COVAG. I, I think the, the, again, the opportunity that COCO presents to, to Ghana and to the African continent and, 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 and they emphasize and in that in that respect, and I would refer to some of the things that Madame Della Austin Craig said in terms of the varied products that we can make out of cocoa. Yeah. Being a, a farmer myself, and I would uh, go ahead of the tourism aspect by saying that I think that the 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 experience of of cocoa starts right from the farm gate. I mean, I, I had some wonderful experiences in South Africa where I lived for some time where the wine industry and the way they, 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 they have built the wine industry over time, I mean, uh, the different wine estates, the different flavors, etc. And in that respect, Kuku is no different. Uh, so just right from the farm gate, then also the difference, I mean, as we 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 get to know a lot and understand a lot more about cocoa uh, the flavor the sauce nowadays with all these issues of small well, uh, opportunities with certification everybody wants to know where the thing comes from etc so uh, there's there's a lot that we need to learn and we need to do to to be up there i mean fortunately by by the high standards that have been set by uh, Ghana Cocoa Board uh, Regulatory Authority, uh, we are premium already. 
but we can not only we can be now a plus in taking advantage of what others have known about us for all this while so that's that's where we we i see the importance of fine being part of or creating this platform but also finding a way to again extract much more value than we're getting uh, from the impression i'm getting you don't think that we do that very I no no I don't I mean I, no if if we tell ourselves we're doing well enough then we wouldn't, we wouldn't be complaining and again I mean I'm sure we've heard about issues in the industry like living income differential for the farmer and Ghana Ivory Coast I mean they they they're real challenges I mean my, my the the cocoa board representative earlier mentioned about sustainability rehabilitation etc and all these things require reinvestment into the farms. They require uh, a whole new approach. I mean, nowadays they are, we are looking at issues of mechanization with all the climate change issues. We have to start looking at irrigation. Access. So the, the, the dynamics are changing, and we need to definitely earn it way more than we're doing right now to be able to reinvest in, in these areas. We need to look at it from a yes. Perspective. Yes. Yes. So um, I said earlier, I was like, oh, poor employees, and that Nana says to me that you know, she starts right at the front. Right. So what's there to see, and why do you think it's important? Yeah, thank you very much, Essie. Um, for us at GTA, uh, as part of our functions, is to promote tourism related activities. And um, this expo is very important to us because it's going to promote uh, domestic tourism as well as. In a larger extent, the international tourists coming in. Because people would like to see the, the product they consume, that's the cocoa, where it's produced. So they would love to go to the farm to see uh, where the cocoa is produced, the process it goes through, and then finally, who does and who is actually behind the cocoa production. So for us, it's number one going to promote domestic tourism, for, which will bring more income and people. You know the ripple effect of domestic tourism economic uh, impact on the uh, the area, I mean the country, even the, the cocoa growing areas. So we are very happy to be associated with this uh, expo and uh, we want to encourage all Ghanaians. This five GTA in some years back, I think I was 16 years ago, we introduced the chocolate day, the national chocolate day. This is to promote domestic consumption of chocolate and the to uh, chocolate uh, products like our uh, cocoa uh, drink and the wine and coke. So um, it's really going to promote domestic. Tourism. It's going to bring in more people. It's going to generate more revenue for us. So we want the other stakeholders involved to, you know, bring on board more the the production level. We are okay there. We have the excellence in production, but to add more value to the product so that we can be able to sell and sell widely because I some few days ago I had a chocolate from Japan and then the, the label on it, on it is Ghana. Yes, it's Ghana. I even took a picture of it. So I'm like, ah, this is a like they they, they that guy told me they promote it. They, they because if you want to buy their chocolate they'll tell you the chocolate this is from Ghana. So look at how the people in Japan far back in Asia are producing, are advertising and promoting our, our products. So I think we also... They're riding on the back of Ghana's Ghana's. Make the money. That's, That's it. Right. <laughs> and, right. So I think we should... Um, this forum is very important for us to help so that we can promote the, the chocolate industry. We can have the, uh, I mean, the cocoa tourism or chocolate tourism or festival to bring on board. It should be a great event to bring on board all chocolate producers and it will, it will be very massive. I and mean, coming people coming all over the world to come and see where to, because we are the leading, one of the leading producers of cocoa. You, I mean, has there been a demand? When tourists come in, have they said, we want to visit the cocoa farms, we want to see the cocoa production, we want to see, you know, it, has that been that kind of... You know, yes, especially the farms. Yeah, they really want to go to the farm to see where the chocolate, the cocoa is produced. And some of them are really amazed how the whole thing looks like how it's grown, and they're like, oh, so this is cocoa, this is how it's, this is how it's dried, and the process, so 
they, if we really promote it, we're well, going to bring a lot of tourists to the country. I look forward to it. <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Banda, yep. manufactured yes, product, uh, that's your cocoa, the cocoa egg. So, since we're looking at the state cocoa industry at the moment, let's look at that. The cocoa manufacturing what state cocoa industry? How can we advance? Well, uh, using this one. yeah, thank you very much. Uh, I think. Um, from the broader perspective of Ghana Expo Promotion Authority, um, uh, manufactured products uh, are one of the products that we promote, we develop and promote, uh, which chocolate is, is, is one of the uh, derivatives, is one of the manufactured products. Now, I see the cocoa and the cocoa derivative industry. Uh, you can broadly uh, segregate it into, or, you know, divide it into three major segments. Uh, we have the primary producer, the cocoa uh, production, which is, uh, which is supervised by cocoa board. And then you have the intermediary product, where you have the cocoa liquor, cocoa paste, and others. And then you have the tertiary, uh, the confectionery side, where you have the chocolate, you have sweetened cocoa powder, you have the, the likes of all the other products that are there. Now, if you look at it carefully, the tertiary sector has is, is the biggest industry in terms of revenue. But in Ghana, the reverse is true. As we go up the value chain, our earnings drop significantly. The, the beans give us a lot more money than the intermediary. But when you go to chocolate and chocolate products, which is cocoa powder, uh, whether sweetened or unsweetened and others, our INS we don't export. The exports are very, very, very low, whether globally or, uh, or whether in Africa. Our biggest market in Africa is Nigeria. Uh, but generally, the industry in terms of export is the reverse, unlike the global market where the the, uh, the tertiary level brings in a lot, a lot more money. So for GEPA, what we're trying to do is to promote the manufactured part, which starts from the uh, middle level, the, the, the secondary uh, level to the tertiary uh, throughout the global market. We, we're doing this in Nigeria, we're doing this in, in Europe, we're doing this in Canada, in all parts of the world, in order to uh, prop up the sector and increase the export earnings uh, in, in the in the tertiary level. So generally, uh, that is how the outlook looks like, and we are hoping that the processing capacity that we have, in terms of uh, whether it is the second or the tertiary, uh, we'll be able to get a lot more beans. We are now in excess of thirty percent processing of beans. We're hoping that we can go beyond thirty. But let me just interrupt. In excess, as in after exporting, we have thirty percent, or when we've exported, we have that no thirty percent in terms of processing of beans. The beans that we process. In excess. No, the beans that we process, the beans that we produce in Ghana, which is about a million tons or so of rice, uh, the quantity that we process into both secondary and tertiary, we're using about thirty percent. All right, so the more we increase the processing uh, volume, oh, yeah. the more we're able to get, we're able to earn more in terms of whether it's secondary or it is, it is tertiary. That is, that is the outlook at its front. And we're hoping that as uh, Cocoa Board intervenes, uh, puts up very good interventions in the primary sector, uh, we'll be able to uh, increase our production and then be able to get a lot more beans. The, the processing companies, whether at the middle uh, level, which is the second or the tertiary level, are producing cocoa and cocoa services, like cocoa chocolate and other derivatives. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, I think you rightly said it, that we need it up to the
more than 10 years since we got to the past after the past six or eight years, people have consistently are giving to the nation 50 million students. And the last one which is the 2021 across the Google Boss supply 92, produced and supplied 92 million uh, hybrid ones that are high yielding and kind of disease tolerant. So they are having affected by a number of people. So they are able to resist and to become more efficient. Should not be at these programs that focus on the national. The disease aspect of Trump would have been a significant production level of Ghana. Uh, if we took into consideration Ghana's hub when it comes to food production, Western North region, and their production level of about 330,000 uh, metric tons. So, to less than 180, that is in half. And therefore, had it not been intervention, we have been looking forward to doing that. We are also ensuring that. But is it, it's sorry to cut you, but I need to ask any <coughs> obstacle, you know, um, preventing you from increasing quantities? Um, my, my, my mind goes to farms that are in your country. Is that an area that you looked at? Have you tried to, you know, solve these? Because this is huge when it comes to, you know, increasing. Yeah, these are part of the thing. But I would say that uh, disease is not the only problem apart from disease. Also, as I said, there we have found that are overgrown and boost disease. As I say, so I mean they are there, but the quantity of Therefore, you need to replace them. So, if your farm is giving you, let's say, two bags of uh, cocoa, you have two hectares and it's giving you two, two bags, then definitely, economically, it's not a good as you were saying that you need to replace them with new seedlings. Now, Galamse is another threat because uh, the farmers, the best cocoa board uh, can do now is that cocoa board do not, does not own the farms. Only speak with the farmers and then speak with agencies that are in relation with the extraction of the mineral. How do they even offer uh, the permit for people to go to mine? And beyond that one, we cocoa board as the industry regulator can speak to the farmers. Let them understand if you have a piece of land, let's say one hectare, and you're using it for cocoa production within one crop year, how many beans will you get? Yes, but we are looking at long term because one cocoa does How are you getting the farmers? How are you getting people like me to appreciate this? Because if I have money to invest. Exactly. We are getting the farmers to appreciate by way of kind of analysis. If you analyze that you have two hectares of land and you're using it for cocoa, if you're doing all the agronomic practices that you need to do in terms of weeding, pruning, application of fertilizers, and then in some cases, if you can do some kind of can help you uh, increase your yield within the same piece of land, which we have we call the uh, vertical vertical uh, integration. So on one hectare, you can have 10, 20 bags, rather than to expand the land use and decrease the forest area, and then reduce the vegetative cover, which is also the climate change. So, so these are some of the interventions that you are making. Now, with the balance, you cannot tell the farmer that don't give your farm because he owns the land. You can only advise them to understand that if you use your farm uh, or your land to do for cocoa farm, it means that for the next 10, 20, 25 years, you could be reaping some good benefits in terms of revenue. But if you gave it out for currency and the whole land is depleted, what can you use the land for? Nothing. So when we get them to understand the benefits over a number of years, then they come home to understand that. The only challenge is that you might find a farmer within uh, a small area surrounded by galaxy. In that case, they find it difficult to maintain the farm. In the sense that even the chemicals around are going to affect the progress of that farm. And I remember going to the eastern region to see some of the farms in the coastal uh, area. And there was this young man who had been approached by these uh, miners to sell the land. In fact, he had tried all means to keep his farm, but in the final analysis, he couldn't do anything. Because one, all the four farms around were bought by these miners, and his was the only one in the middle. Therefore, there's no way if your farm is surrounded by a 
there may be this available. Yet, I put more the still finding means of speaking with other industry. Uh, I dare say, Kukuba so could have made this projection <laughs> way ahead, but yes, I do appreciate the intervention. Yes, I do appreciate the intervention. It's also a huge challenge to, to the nation at large and to the objective of our number one year. Could you please tell me why you think that this new product? Yes. In as much as we are pushing the agenda of increasing beans, the theme says Africa Beyond Bean, meaning that Cocoa Board is doing their maximum best to increase volume of cocoa beans year upon year. Now, if we are increasing the beans and we say that we must retain as much here because the revenue is obtained when you add value to it. And we as the artisans are the ones to add value to it. We have challenges as, as, as an association. The beans are here, yet it's inaccessible. How so? How so because um, when our father, Coco Board, <laughs> took off many years ago, little did they know they were going to have a grandchild called Kovac. And so the laws that exist, which were um, established many years ago and currently existed, seeks to militate against our survival. Because it was um, all bent on the fact that cocoa is exported. It's now that we are coming home to know that we must add value and harness more of the benefits at that level. And so if we as a people currently I'm a biochemist, my over a decade in industry, now set up to give knowledge and skills to our people. Because if Africa beyond beings, meaning more of the beings should be, where are the people who have the knowledge and the skill to add the value to it? Mm -hmm. So my contribution as a biochemist with that knowledge is empowering our people through knowledge transfer, skills acquisition, and all that. How are you partnering with A lot, a lot. <laughs> We already have discussions going on, and we hope that that discussion will see the light of day and the, the, the expectations and our demands will be. Because if we don't have access to beans, yes, we will get more beans, we'll go beyond a million um, tons, and still there won't be the people who because can use it. Farm, it goes to so that's the established um, program by Cocoa Board. From farm, it goes to cocoa board and then it's exported. They are now turning an eye to look at us. How can we get some to process locally? And that discussion is still in the pipeline. Nana, we are looking at when <laughs> that discussion will <laughs> It should remain yeah. and be accessible mm -hmm. to us so that the laws or the system that has made it inaccessible, we will you know, look at um, adjusting them. In a way that, if I may, if I may add something small, just as my uh, sister said, that uh, most of the beans, as it were, the, uh, the laws were bought by Coco Board and then exported. Um, the law at the point in time would only sell about 50 metric tons of cocoa, which is way above uh, the accessibility level of these properties. Mm -hmm. But as she said, what we discussed is that the smallest chocolate here can have some kind of access if you want a 64 kilogram bag of cocoa to. Process in a confectionery or something that is being put in place. And there and are discussions, to yeah, there are discussions ongoing which will allow for that. Yeah, I think again, all these discussions point to the crux of the reason why we need this platform. We've created this platform. I must emphasize again, I'm a farmer, and in the challenges that uh, Galamze or whatever has. The representative from Cocoa Board rightly said, the land is owned by the farmers. And so the choice as to what we do with our land is ours. What will make it attractive to the farmers is to see real value. And that real value at this point in time is not in the farming. It is in the value addition. So as important as the farming is, as a foundation without, because without that, you don't have the raw material. 
but like in other places in South America, etc., where they see real value because they are then the farmers are then the beneficiaries of the value-added products. That's not the case right now. Here, here again, when you look historically at the way Cocoa Board was set up and the CMB was set up, it wasn't set up by us. It was set up by the British for the British industry. So they set it up and they've left and we are still hanging on to this same old, for God's sake, repressive slavery model, which has to change. So, and it is up to us. At the end of the day, Mandalay, Olam, Barikalibu, whoever, the big players are still very happy with us producing plenty raw material, plenty beans for them to buy for cheap. Because it is simple economics. The more you have in abundance, the lower the price. It's very simple. So until we realize that we got to use our own stuff for our own selves, they set up the system and they've gone. Again, emphasis, Cocoa Marketing Board was set up by the British and it was set up in particular for UAC and Cadbury's. Simple. We've adopted this model. We've done almost nothing about it properly. Law was changed a bit in 1984. Those who wrote those laws were very progressive people. The Chachuchicates, the Profakila Kwasoyas of those times. And they wrote the laws for us. We have just blinded ourselves because it is so easy to just farm for somebody to come and take away and go do the hard work. If we want to do the hard work, we have the foundation after all. This current government is talking about one district, one factory. I keep on asking myself, how do we have our most valuable raw material not being the foundation for industrialization? It does not make sense. It doesn't. If we have cocoa in that we are producing in abundance, it should be the foundation for a one district, one factory initiative. So we've got to turn things around because, sorry, the way it was set up, it was set up as farmers to produce for cheap for British industry. Simple. That's almost depressing to me. But I say almost because I see, uh, you know, uh, the horizon and good things that we have. There's light at the end of the tunnel. Indeed. indeed. And so once we have, we've identified these challenges and have the platforms to resolve, you know, issues and also look for solutions that can actually propel us forward. There's, there's hope. So I'm not too sad. <laughs> uh, if, if, if I may, uh, listening to the other panelists, the issue with regards to uh, using cocoa for so many things, because Nana mentioned that apart uh, from the coffee and the wine and other things, there are so many things that we can use cocoa for. Cocoa board with regards to cocoa research is concerned as a new uh, unit, as a new product development unit, where they are using other cocoa byproducts uh, to produce new things. Because as it were, we use cocoa for only chocolate and then uh, chocolate drinks, but now we are using it for me. We have the cocoa jam, we have cocoa wine. Oh, you do? Yeah, we do. We have Did you bring a sample? Well, I don't have a sample here, but if you go to the exhibition uh, platform, you find some of the products out there with that in So, pictures. We have a cocoa biscuit, there's cocoa jam, a number of them that Cocoa Board is looking forward to partnering. Other people, you know, when it comes like Hobart and others, when it comes to uh, production of all these, it's more of capital intensive, and the mandate of Cocoa Board is not to be producing these things on large quantities for sale, but we rather need partners both locally and internationally to set up, make Ghana the hub, and probably export to the West African, African hub region, and locally. If we do that, then we can begin to earn more from the cocoa that we are producing, but not only. Is that way the whole cocoa tree from the from the leaves to the roots become beneficial to society and not only to them. All is not lost, Nana. The dynamics are shifting. Yes, yes. Mr. Banda. Yes. Again, I'm going back to you on your your products. 
enhancement yes. and exposure. Yes, for for GEFA, uh, like I said before, our primary objective is to ride on the goodwill that Ghana has in terms of processed products within the sub-regional market and within the whole of Africa when it comes to quality products. Ghana is known for quality. Let me, let me just yeah. quickly ask you how you're able to discover the new products no, so what we, we have adopted a strategy of going around our supermarkets, our markets, to identify small and small enterprises, micro and small enterprises that have not been captured by GEPES radar. We identify them, we have identified a few uh, artisanal chocolate manufacturers, we pick them up and then we bring them to GEPA, we register them train them, we look at their packaging, we look at their finishing and, uh, and see whether they are export ready or not. If they are not, we train them with both their capacity and make them export ready and take them through certain key protocols and certifications that will enable them to export either to the sub regional market or to Africa and to the whole of the world. Are you already familiar with COVA? Well, so thank you very much, everybody, for making the time to actually share with the global community uh, how COCO is progressing in Ghana and Africa at large and what uh, mechanisms and avenues we can explore to make sure that we're not, we have edu educated me going from the bean to the middle, uh, secondary uh, process level and also the tertiary uh, production level. I appreciate the education. Uh, I've been talking to Mr. Banda, Zachary Banda. He is a deputy director of manufactured pro uh, products uh, for GEPA. And um, Madame Della Melchizedek, Ghana Tourist, Tourism Authority, telling us about how Coco uh, Tourism is going to open up the tourism industry to grow. Not so. <laughs> so, right. <laughs> and Nanette Juna, uh, the co founder of uh, the Africa Coco and Chocolate Institute that we currently. Uh, Talking on on his platform, yeah. He's a cocoa farmer, and like I said earlier, that excites me. They want to be heard. They want people to know that there are other byproducts. So we should seek to explore it, make it, make it known. And of course, Almighty Grandfather Cook, Mr. Kenneth Osayam, for the Senior Public Affairs Officer, letting us know how Cocoa World is also uh, meeting the, the, the new uh, paradigm and what interventions they're actually bringing on board to make sure we achieve the Africa Beyond Beings agenda that we have for. We'll be coming back with more. And hopefully uh, in the afternoon, we'll have the formal opening of this event. And so you will continue to stay with us and join us. I'm sure the link is displayed on your screen somewhere. And so you can click on it, share, share it, tell a friend, tell a friend that this is happening on the blue Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Thank you very much. Thank okay. you.
Javier Asari in our midst. Um, the shoulders on which this whole event is riding, along with the New York country here. Also, the CEO for GIPC, um, Mr. Yofi Brown. And uh, Honorable Yao Fimpong Ado, he's the Deputy Minister for We also have Mr. Sam Dintu. He's also the Deputy CEO for GEPA, uh, in charge of operations. Oh, I'm glad I was nice to you. <laughs> and uh, also we have uh, the other Deputy CEO for GEPA, in charge of administration is um, Mr. Albert Dua. Have I got the name correct? Dura. So this is Mr. Albert Dura. And finally, uh, we have Dr. Farid Asa. Coordinator, Ghana AFCS. Oh. oh Dr. Imano Poku, Deputy CEO. Welcome, sir. Thank you for um, being here. Did you listen to our second session? Were you able to? We also appreciate the effort. So again, you're welcome to the opening of the Africa Cocoa Chocolate Expo, very second in Africa, the first Thank you. Please shall we pray. Our Father, in the name of Jesus, we are grateful unto you for the opportunity to meet together to discuss how best we can add value to our cocoa and to promote it as a business. We thank you for all the delegates, the important dignitaries that have joined us. We pray for a successful program. We pray that at the end of it all, our objectives for doing this program will be achieved. We thank you and we bless you. In Jesus' mighty name, we pray with thanksgiving. Amen. We want to have a cultural performance. So um, I understand the performers are ready. Are they ready? Do we want the fact we're we're going to watch it because we are going to see. Let me add that this is a global event. It's happening virtually. Uh, we have people from the United States, the UK, China, and what have you joining us. So they are all watching. The performance is coming from, uh, I believe, the folk folklore board, the national. Folk what interventions uh, and how they can actually correct it because you're producing a cocoa for a month. 
Indeed. <laughs> that? Okay, good. So I will have that. Thank you. I thought that we were going to break in with the opening remarks, but it's okay. I, I am I am cuckoo person here, so I will provide the answer. The, the, the problem is why are we exporting all people of things? Um, we are not exporting everything. Our Christians are regulated by law. Or a military rule of law that regulates our functions. And that's a Ghana Act. Uh, what it says when it comes to marketing the the minimum cocoa volume you can have fifty percent multiply by thirty two percent that's the minimum and we we work with that no local company is in Last I've met Small area that is so it's go by law. We will not be able to sell to any local The minimum you can buy is fifty percent. So this is red. So this year. Go and buy Thank you for allowing me to hit the rough road. Um, thank you so much. Thank you so much. Are we ready with our performance? We're still not ready yet? Okay. Um, then please, I would like to call um, the CEO of GEPA to actually give us a formal opening address. Please, we want to give that. We know how. Thank you so much. Honorable Minister of Trade and the Deputy of Trade and Investment, Mr. Lesley Nuti, here for the Food and Agriculture, the Deputy Minister of Trade and the Executive Director of the Ministries of Trade and Investment, the representative of the Secretary General of Africa period, the President of New York Cocoa Foundation, colleague chief executives, representatives of government ministries, departments and agencies, distinguished invited guests from Ghana and beyond, cherished exhibitors, 
Friends from the media, ladies and gentlemen, I extend my warm welcome to every one of you joining us virtually today for the opening ceremony of the second edition of the Africa Cocoa and Chocolate Expo ACCE21. To all of you, Akwaba. Akwaba. Yena. Good. Yeah, Jimmy, I hear you what. <laughs> it will be recalled that the maiden edition was held in October 2019 under the theme celebrating innovation, motivation, and consumption. The key objective, sorry, I, 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 I said it wrongly. The theme was celebrating innovation, motivating consumption. The key objective for organizing the event was to draw attention to the Ghanaian public to the need to increase consumption of cocoa products. As we all are aware, cocoa is the leading export product of Ghana and has sustained the economy for more than 100 years. Sadly, we have not done enough as a country to add value to this valuable crop which is proudly referred to in the past as the food of the goats. We also know the passion with which His Excellency Nana Adudankwa Ekufuadu has on several occasions drawn attention to the need to add more value to our cocoa to increase export revenue. I am happy to report that the maiden edition of the ACCE has largely achieved its primary objective thanks to the effective collaboration of our key partner, the Know Your Cocoa Foundation. Let me use the occasion, therefore, to commend Nana Eduna II for his fortitude and singular dedication to the promotion of cocoa value chain and his passion to drive the value chain agenda. We have once again carefully chosen the theme for this second edition of the ACC 21, Africa Beyond Beans, raising a new generation of cocopreneurs for wealth creation. This theme continues and builds on our maiden theme. Our goal is to foster the general knowledge of the different uses of cocoa products and to encourage local consumption. Above all, we also want to draw more of the younger generation into the sector. It is worthy of mention that we have witnessed a recent sharp rise in the number of young entrepreneurs who are venturing into artisanal chocolate production and various other cocoa-based products such as cosmetics, confectionaries, and many other products. What is even more satisfying for me personally is a significant number of young women that are entering this space. GEPA is determined to provide more support to these people to do more. We will also provide them the necessary market facilitation support to see them break into the competitive markets in Africa and beyond. Ladies and gentlemen, we at Ghana Export Promotion Authority are open to collaboration with interested um, partners to further open up the cocoa sector to more investments. Indeed, we are happy to work with the Ghana Investment Promotion Center and the Ghana Cocoa Board to this end. Honorable Ministers, I'm happy to inform you that GEPA has recently started discussions with Cocoa Board on ways to increase domestic consumption and patronage of cocoa products, including chocolates. We hope to jointly roll out programs in the coming months. In the same vein, GEPA has supported GIPC in diverse ways to attract investments into the cocoa processing sector. We are also in discussions with the International Trade Center, our key international partner, to implement a new program in the cocoa sector to boost exports. All these efforts are being pursued in the context of the implementation of the National Export Development Strategy, of which the cocoa value chain is a key priority. It is indeed a joint vision of Ghana Export Promotion Authority and the Know Your Cocoa Foundation 
that the ACCE will grow to become a truly African premier and dedicated show for the cocoa value chain, which will be able to rival all other expos in its category globally. Considering this, I am happy to inform us that several foreign exhibitors and guests are part of this virtual exhibition. We have lined up a series of panel discussions on various interesting topics at the sidelines of the expo, and we urge maximum patronage and active participation. Even though they will be held virtually, we encourage everybody to be a part of this. We have gone at length to ensure that we provide the best and most fulfilling experience for all our local and global exhibitors and patrons. The Expo Climax is on Sunday, 26th September 2021, with a mouth-watering physical cocoa tour to one of the most serene and cocoa farms located in the eastern region of Ghana. Honorable ministers, invited guests, before I resume my seat, permit me to state that GEPA is poised to provide all the necessary facilitation to Ghanaian exporters and persons who are interested in venturing into the export business with maximum support possible. It is for this reason that we have recently established the GEPA Impact Hub, which is a technology-driven export trade information center stocked with trade-related print online and online resources to serve the needs of the Ghanaian exporter and the general export um, stakeholders. We will be happy to receive them in the hub and they can be assured of the quickest service which is unrivaled. Our three key government export trade regulators, the Ghana Standards Authority, the Food and Drugs Authority and the Plant Protection and Regulatory Service Directorate are also in the Impact Hub to make it a truly one-stop shop facility. Indeed, this ceremony is being streamed live from the hub, attesting to its multi-purpose functions. On this note, I welcome you all once again for joining us. Thank you very much and enjoy the ceremonies. Akwaba. Thank you. Behind every event, there's a story. And so we want to hear the story of Coco and the inception of uh, the ACCE. Nana Eduna, the Achiamihini of the Kapim traditional area, and also the co founder of uh, ACCE, uh, Know Your Coco Foundation, tell us the story. Thank you very much, Madam. Good afternoon to all of you, the Honorable Deputy Minister, Minister of Food and Agriculture, the Chief Executive Officer of the Ghana Export Promotion Authority, and our esteemed partner and host, Chief Executive Officer of the Ghana Investment Promotion Center, my big senior in school, Mr. Yofi Grant. The Deputy Chief Executive Officer of the Ghana Cocoa Board, Dr. Puku, and as they say, our grandfather in law, Cocoa Marcus in Ghana. The Africa Continental Trade, Africa Continental Free Trade Area, a hugely important institution in our current deliberations. Two representatives, Dr. Kumla Bisi and Madam Eugenia Ngabiri. My friend, Mr. Samdin, to the Deputy Chief Executive of an Export Promotion Authority, and his colleague, Mr. Abed Duwura. Dr. Afarid Atha, also a coordinator of the Africa Continental Free Trade Office in Ghana. All protocols observed. 
think that traditionally in my role, I should be pouring libation by now, welcoming you officially. But circumstances are different. However, I think that in my traditional role, and incidentally, Coco started from the Ekpapim traditional area. And incidentally also, it's almost 200 years since in the 1820s when Mr. Uh, Reverend Andreas Rees of the Basa Missionaries approached Okuapenghine Adudankwa the first. Incidentally, who the, president, the current president is named after, uh, to set up a mission in Okapong because that place was conducive for their activities, their business activities as well as their religious activities. So I don't know whether this is by coincidence or this is by fate, but uh, I'm on a mission because at that time, we were the custodians and the representatives at the time who guided the Omahini at the time to receive the Basel missionaries. Uh, it's important to narrate that history because it was through the Basel missionaries that the actual establishment of cocoa planting in our part of the world became fruition. I think fast forward to our venerable Tetekwashi, who was responsible for the commercial activities with respect to cocoa production, who got this wonderful crop from Fernando Po and was able to propagate the commercial activity. 200 years ago is a long time and we've been growing the crop. However, when you also look at the parallel activities that were going on, in the 1800s as well, that's when the Europeans discovered butter pressing, taking butter out of cocoa. They also discovered the production of chocolate. So when you look around those times, it was the same times that the popular names that we know about now, Nestle, Lindt, Cadbury's, they were all in the 1800s. So as they were encouraging us to grow for them, they were developing the value addition. There's an indirect relationship between cocoa and slavery also, because importantly, at the time the Portuguese were being stopped from slavery, they moved to Fernando Po and to Sao Tome and Principe, where they established slavery colonies for the plantations over there. Very interesting history. Up till now, we are still growing cocoa as a farming product for export. It's high time that we started to change the paradigm. The whole essence of our foundation is that, as the name suggests, it's important that we know our cocoa. It means that we've got to know our historical origins. And most importantly, we've also got to know the advantages and the use of the crop. I happen to have a medical background as well. And I was fortunate enough to have worked for one of the largest pharmaceutical companies in the world, Pfizer. I was also privy to the development of a product called Viagra. Incidentally, the way it works, it works through the antioxidant system, nitrous oxide, of which the majority of the larger product is cocoa, or the in the natural, natural product in there is cocoa. It dawned on me then as a farmer that there was a lot more to this product. It's important again that 
we know our cocoa so that we are able to take full advantage and use of it. Thank you very much. Now we know the story of the cocoa. And so uh, it's not just the Takwashi right? We know that the, the missionaries were also part of the cocoa story and how come we're here today. Thank you for the insight. I would now, we now like to take some remarks from key industry stakeholders. And we would begin with uh, Mr. Yofi Grant from GIPC. Thank you, sir. Oh, you want to be here either? Yes, no, please. So I think you probably might want to. I'll be happy if you sanitize the room. And I think it's only right that now uh, we recognize the fact that perhaps um, it would better serve us if we add value to the crop. And definitely, there is a lot of merit in that thinking. Because uh, between Ghana and Cote d'Ivoire, uh, who probably do about 67% of the cocoa or somewhere around there, it's, that's about an 8 billion, maximum 8 billion economy every year. But this year alone, and by 2024, the chocolate industry is expected to yield about $161 billion. Currently, it's around $140 billion. That's just chocolate. Not to mention the liquor, the butter, and all the other derivatives. In fact, even the cocoa rejects, so what we call the husks, that is the, the, the um, sort of uh, what is left after harvesting, etc., is a major possible um, uh, input for fuel generation. So the crop itself has myriad benefits, loads of benefits. And to think that for every bar of chocolate sold, the farmer gets less than 5% of the price doesn't sit well with many of us who you know, are in the value chain of business. And therefore, for us at the GIPC, we believe that the cocoa crop itself, through, from the tree to the bean, um, gives enough reason to attract investors and in, to add value in many ways. In many, many ways. And it's instructive, as Nana said that now, um, and, the, and the CEO said that we see a lot of um, small chocolatiers in the industry. And yes, as Dr. Poku said, there is merit also in amending the policy such that we can actually sell cocoa to the small chocolatiers so they can up their game. I mean, I've been to Switzerland many times, and one of my very good friends in Switzerland belongs to a family that has probably 60% of the control of the chocolate industry in Geneva. And I asked him recently, so have you ever seen a cocoa tree? He said, no. I've never seen a cocoa tree. In fact, it wasn't until quite recently that he even saw the bean. He just deals with the business of it. And, and so for us who live with this crop, how much more can we do with it? I believe there's a lot more we can do with it. We even, I mean, I remember two years ago, I was, in, I was in the Netherlands, and a lot of the cocoa crop is traded in Holland. And you see the barges on the rivers taking our cocoa. And you know that that barge in itself means times 50, the price that it was bought from Accra. And sometimes you're like, gosh, this is where I should be. Not at just planting the thing and, and selling the beans. So I am delighted that this, um, is, this conference is happening. 
Uh, I'm delighted also that it's hit global interest. Uh, the cocoa has a global interest for many reasons. Uh, that it's a, it's a multi-purpose plant and a, a multi-purpose crop and so much can be done out of it. Perhaps where we now need to shift our, our attention is also in the marketing of it. That is just not in the crop production, but the marketing. So what is it at the end of the, of the whole value chain of cocoa should we focus on? And how do we market it? And how do we start looking at investors with that end point in view? And that is where we are working with um, um, GEPA, we are working with um, Cocoa Board, and we are working with the um, um, Ministry of uh, Food and Agriculture to ensure that we bring the right type of investment. But also we encourage our own people to invest in the industry. Like I said, um, Nana, I have known him as Dr. Fojo, as a psychiatrist, you know, but here he is today. He's actually engaged in the whole value chain of um, cocoa uh, from the bean right down to come in a, quite a number of products um, indigenously. And I'm sure a lot of indigenous people can do the same. Um, very often at GIPC, I, I hear that about you people give everything out to the foreigners. And I, and I keep telling them, but the cocoa is here. We don't need to give anything to any foreigner. We ourselves can do it. And so we encourage partnerships with investors who also want to be in that side of the business. And I, I know that um, there are big players in the cocoa industry. We've had conversations with all of them and encouraging them that perhaps it serves you better to come manufacture here than to buy the beans from Rotterdam or wherever and go manufacture. Indeed, it makes a lot more sense. And I know that some big players are even looking at going further down the value chain to actually doing the plantations here. And so as Ghanaians, we should take advantage of this opportunity even if not in partnerships, on our own. And it's very, very in instructive of where the country must go as a f uh, in the future because we are moving away from the export of our raw materials and resources to value addition and industrialization. And I believe that Cocoa gives us a good template to follow through. Um, and I know Cocoa Board itself is very eager to see a lot more production come at the higher end of the value chain because that represents higher revenues for the country. And even as we go out to borrow to fund the crop, we hope that the end result will be virtual, um, would be um, value addition to the crop to ensure that the revenues we extract from cocoa are much higher than they are today. The AFCFTA also gives us a unique opportunity to look at the market end of cocoa. And as I speak, we are already in talks with Rwanda, who want to actually situate a cocoa factory in Rwanda. Because they, they see the value of it. They see the multiplier effect of adding value to cocoa. So perhaps we over here should take advantage of the opportunity even before anybody else does. And we are happy at the GIPC to work with indigenous investors in the cocoa sector. In fact, as a child, I always dreamt that I one day own a cocoa farm. Uh, because that was the only piece of Ghanaian history I knew, Tete Kwashi. Uh, and it, recently, somebody explained to me that but we are always talking of cocoa like cocoa is indigenous to Ghana. It is not. It was brought by somebody here, but we have actually monetized it well, and I think we can do much, much better than we've done before. So let's all support this very noble cause. Cocoa is a crop that Ghana is known for. We have the premium cocoa in, from Ghana, and I believe that it's going to stay a premium crop for quite a while because of the way we sun dry it and the type of cocoa that we have. Um, some have said that if we produce more cocoa, it will be a detriment because then the price is going to come down. But it depends on what we do with it. It really depends on what we do with it. I'm also even told that there are two types of cocoa beans. There's the, the, the high yield crop and then the minor crop. Is that correct? Now, is the minor crop that many of our... The main crop, sorry. The main crop and the minor crop. And now the two have different qualities. And our chocolatiers have to use the quality because the export price is lower. Is that not correct? Okay. 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 Uh, but you've also answered the same question because I'm told that the quality of cocoa is dependent on the butter in it. So, <laughs> so it ends up the same thing. So, 
Oh, the flavor. Okay. So I hope that maybe we can also get to a point where the main crop um, that has a higher butter content can also be used domestically for product because they will get higher value product. I hope so. I hope the logic works. But as it is, um, there is definitely a cause and a reason for further investment into the cocoa value chain because we can actually see multiplier effects in the economy um, and adding value. It's a crop we know, it's a culture we know, um, and we should take advantage of it. So uh, we are ready at GIPC to help um, anybody who wants to go into that sector. The products from Cocoa are many. I mean, there are so many that, um, and um, I believe that there is the opportunity for us all to leverage on that to improve national income. So I think these are just a few of the points that I want to say that we are ready um, and to engage, we are ready to support, and we are ready to assist. And uh, we will keep working with GEPA to ensure that we actually look at the full value chain of cocoa, right from the bean to whatever products we can get out of. Thank you very much for listening. And uh, yeah. much we appreciate the concerns you raised with regards to COVID-19. Um, yes, indeed, we need to sanitize our, our, our microphones. We will do so. But in the meantime, I will entreat speakers to please take the mic for us because it's a global conference and it's virtual. So we would need to ensure that uh, those who are online can be heard. So thank you. Um, I'd like to call the Deputy Minister for Agriculture, um, Honorable Yao Fimpong Ado, to please give his remarks. Thank you so much. I will put this here, and so when you're done, you can close. Yeah, my colleague, Deputy Minister of Trade and Industries, who is watching us virtually, um, the CEOs of GIPC and GIPA, uh, my good friend, Deputy CEO, Coco Board, Dr. Poku, invited guests, um, distinguished ladies and gentlemen, our colleagues from the media. I convey warm greetings from the Minister for Food and Agriculture, Dr. Husio Friyakutu, who is unable to join us due to an equally important assignment elsewhere. To say that I'm honored to take his place at this august and auspicious occasion is an understatement, given the array of distinguished personalities and industry players gathered at the second African Cocoa and Chocolate Expo 2021. The Africa Cocoa and Chocolate Expo is no doubt a brilliant idea that requires the support of all. The reason is not far-fetched considering the globally acclaimed economic and health benefits of cocoa. Our Nana alluded to one, just one benefit of cocoa, but I know a lot about the benefits of cocoa because I was born in a cocoa farm. We in Africa and Ghana in particular really attest to the contribution of cocoa to our economy since independence. Cocoa has been the cash cow and indeed the lifeblood of our economy following its introduction by Tete Kwashi of blessed memory in 1879. The commodity has been the mainstay of Ghana's economy accounting for over 30% of the country's foreign exchange earnings even as a primary export commodity. Nonetheless, we take, the, we take pride in the fact that Ghana has long been the leading producer of cocoa in the world and for long the number one until we lost the enviable position to our neighbors and brothers in the Ivory Coast. Ladies and gentlemen, cocoa has indeed done a lot for Ghana, not least putting the country on the international map. As a country, not only do we owe our relative success largely to cocoa, but also 
uh, remain optimistic that the commodity holds huge and inherent economic prospects for the country going forward. My, my two CEOs alluded to this fact, and you must still stress on the fact that uh, when we add more value to our cocoa, cocoa is the way to go. Our competitive advantage in the production of cocoa means that we possess the ability and capacity to exploit to the fullest all the opportunities offered by the commodity commercially. It is for this singular reason that the African Cocoa and Chocolate Expo is an initiative worth deserving of commendation. Through this expo, the immense potential of cocoa industry will best be appreciated, not only by producers but also by actors along the value chain and especially potential investors. Critically, Ghanaians need to know more about the health benefits of cocoa to increase domestic consumption and demand for the commodity. This will create more jobs and what is referred to as cocopreneurs. Cocopreneurs. Ladies and gentlemen, the cocoa industry, as we all know, has its challenges both domestically and at the international level. The industry has, however, remained resilient, reaching a record high of 1.033 million metric tons in the 2020-2021 season. And no mean achievement by all standards. This is all due to the policies and innovative solutions put in place by Cocoa Board. It is important to know that oversight responsibility for, co for Ghana's cocoa industry was assigned to Ministry of Food and Agriculture in 2017 from the Minister of Finance by His Excellency the President of the Republic of Ghana, Nana Adudankwa Ekufuadu. The wisdom in that decision is reflecting in the performance of the cocoa industry. In spite of the enormous challenges, it is a credit to MOFA and Cocoa Board as well as allied agencies that they have managed to steer the affairs of the industry pursuant to the vision of the president, which is to strategically position the industry to drive the industrialization agenda through value addition and generate greater revenue for the country. Similarly, Initiatives such as the Africa Cocoa and Chocolate Expo attest to the determination of government through the managers of the industry to push the boundaries of the cocoa industry to the highly competitive level that opens up opportunities for greater investment, partnership, and expanded trade. The CEO of Cocoa Board, Honorable Yedu, who initiated the campaign for the consumption of cocoa products locally and beyond our borders, and the Honorable Minister for Food and Agriculture, who is fac whose facilitation and personal effort has created greater awareness about Ghana's cocoa products at international exhibitions, such as in China in 2018, deserve tons of commendation. Ladies and gentlemen, to ensure that Ghana continues to play a lead role in cocoa production and to make cocoa beans available for processing and exports, and ensure the success of the value addition agenda by the ministry will continue and ensure the success of the value addition agenda. The ministry will continue to provide sound policy and strategic direction for the production of cocoa. This imperative in the face of climate, climate change and its negative effects, as well as the threat of cocoa diseases on an annual basis. Government through Cocoa Board will also continue to support farmers under the cocoa rehabilitation program, mass pruning and spraying, the hand pollination program, and improved extension services to increase yields of farmers. Appropriate pricing mechanisms such as the living income differential pricing mechanism to guarantee farmers' incomes in the face of falling market prices is a major incentive for farmers and therefore government will give it the priority it deserves. In conclusion, ladies and gentlemen, as we seek opportunities to create jobs for teaming youth in this country, it is my hope that the Expo will attract cocopreneurs from within and outside to establish flourishing enterprises along the cocoa value chain. The theme for this year's Expo, Africa Beyond Beans, raising a new generation of cocopreneurs for wealth creation, should inspire us all to work assiduously towards achieving our goal of transforming the cocoa industry from a mainly primary commodity industry to one of value 
addition. I trust that this year's Africa Cocoa and Chocolate Expo also be a resounding success as was the case in the previous year. Thank you for your kind attention. Thank you. Thank you very much, Honorable Frimpong. Uh, we appreciate your time and contribution. We understand you have a meeting, and so you need to go. Thank you. Um, I would like to call on the Chief Executive of Cocoa Board, Dr. Imakelo Toku, whom, who has engaged us previously, to actually give his formal remarks. Thank you. Thank you very much. Once again, good afternoon to all participants. Honorable Deputy Minister of Food and Agriculture, Honorable Deputy Minister for Trade and Industry, Chief Executive Officer, Ghana Export Promotion Authority, Chief Executive Officer, Ghana Investment Promotion Center. Chief Executive Officer, Ghana Tourism Authority. Representatives Hello, of the have a card? Your card? You have a card? Secretary General of AFDAC Secretariat here. Nana Aduna II. Ladies and gentlemen, all protocol observed. It is an honor to speak at such a high level business forum. At the opening ceremony of the second Africa Cocoa and Chocolate Expo 2021. My presence here today affirms our commitment to stakeholder engagement to ensure that Ghana's cocoa sector continues to contribute to the country's socioeconomic development. I would first of all I would want, first of all, to congratulate the Ghana Export Promotion Authority for this laudable initiative. As we celebrate, I wish to remind all of you that we owe it a national duty to contribute in our small way to help sustain the cocoa industry, given the critical role played by the cocoa sector in our country's development. The theme for today's event, which is Africa Beyond Beans, raising a new generation of co cocoa preneurs for wealth creation, is timely and cannot be overemphasized. We need to inject the spirit of entrepreneurship in all the value chain stages to maximize our gains and sustain cocoa production in Ghana. For this goal, ladies and gentlemen, the, cocoa, the Ghana Cocoa Board has initiated some critical interventions to create the enabling environment to raise the next generation of cocoa preneurs. One of the limiting factors to raising the next generation of cocoa preneurs and cocoa farming is the low productivity levels. The current productivity of cocoa farms averaging 450 kilograms per hectare is unacceptably low and not attractive enough to raise cocoa preneurs in cocoa farming. The main factors to low productivity include the raising, sorry, the rising incidence of pests and diseases, aging cocoa farmers and cocoa farms, decline in soil fertility, low technology adoption rates, and unfavorable weather conditions. Cocoa Board introduced the Productivity Enhancement Programs, which we call PEP, to improve cocoa farms' productivity, make cocoa farming lucrative enough, and attract cocoa preneurs. The PEPs include mass pruning, mass spraying, hand pollination, rehabilitation, fertilizer application, and irrigation. And I'm glad to say that we put together all these programs within the last four years. The Productivity Enhancement Program's ultimate aim is to raise the productivity of cocoa farms to 
to at least one one thousand kg per hectare and stimulate farmer appetite for sustained high, higher yields. We believe a sustained higher a sustained need for higher yields would trigger farmer demand for such services as the local expertise in pollination and pruning. These critical services lay a solid foundation for jobs requiring no high level education yet lucrative offers in the local cocoa communities. They will ensure that farmers have access to rural service centers, which will go a long way to sustain farm productivity and create employment in the cocoa communities. For example, um, I recall that when we first introduced um, pollination and cocoa, the first year I was in charge of the, the division that did that. And I had a duty to recruit 10,000 Ghanaians to, to go into the cocoa area and pollinate the farms. So what I did was to go on the map and then create training centers because I didn't know how I was going to put 10,000 people in one location and train them or even in different locations. So um, I looked at the entire cocoa landscape and placed a center in 10 kilometer radius. So every 10 kilometer, whether left, right, south, wherever, I just put a, a, a center. And I did, I got 2,000 centers. And then, you know, 200 centers. And then plan how to train all the 10,000 people. So, Every 10 kilometer radius, we put a training center there, whether we know the place or not. But of course, we knew. And then trained my extension people, used only a few people, uh, experts in uh, one of our divisions, the seed production division, trained my extension people, sent them to Munsukoko College to pollinate the farms we have there. I went there to see the, the output, the outcome and then deploy them to the field, to the training centers. And then depending on where, and so we made sure that we recruited only local people to do the pollination. We didn't want to take anybody from Accra to let's say Bonsun Kanta to pollinate cocoa. That person will not, see, will not stay. You needed somebody who lives in there to do that exercise. So we got all the 10,000 people. We went to all the centers and we trained them in record time. And after that, we also deploy them to the farmers' fields to pollinate the farms, and it was successful. First year, uh, we have we had an average of four bucks per acre, instead of about three bucks that the farmers were making per acre, and it's something that since then we've built on it. The, the next year, we 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 recruited twenty thousand Ghanaian youth, but the, the what I did was that. The whole idea was that we wanted to introduce this technology to the farms and then encourage lo the locals to set up small uh, enterprises so that when we are out of the pollination program, the farmers can still secure their service, hide their services to pollinate their farms for them. So the f at the end of the first year, I selected uh, 1,000 out of the 10,000 and sent them to Bonsukoko College and then brought in. Uh, an expert to train them in entrepreneurship. So the, we picked the, the, the very the high performing individuals who pollinate their farms and send them to Boons 1000 and train them. So it was a kind of a multiplier effect that we were looking for. So those 1000 was, was support, were, were going to support the, the, the trainers we had the year before uh, to train the additional 10,000 we engaged. And by that strategy, we have very good pollinators. Pollination, all you need to know is to be able to, uh, you know, uh, uh, what is this, needle, a place a, a, a Yeah, forces. But then you sh your eyes should be very, very, very sharp so that you can needle a thread. 
otherwise you can and then you, you your, your your plants should also not be picked because you are picking a pollen from flower uh, to, to put it in your pet house the scientific terminology so that's all they, so all you needed to do or you needed the only requirement was a very sharp eye and that's all you needed when you are caught with doors so you didn't really need any high level education but with that and and you can set up your own small enterprise and support the farmer because if a farmer can raise product production on his farm from or let's say productivity from three bucks to average 12 bucks it makes a huge gain of nine bucks he can conveniently pay you two bucks and then still make a gain of about uh, seven bucks but the interesting thing is that we found out a farmer, some farmers made 36 bucks from one acre. The high performing farmers, 36 bucks from one acre. That's, that's more than two tons on one acre. Scientifically, we say that uh, one hectare you produce three tons. That is about 16 times three. That's, that gives you about 40 something uh, bucks. But uh, from one acre and, and one hectare is two and a half acres. So if a farmer is doing 36 bucks on one acre, you multiply that by 2.5 so on one hectare. A very serious farmer would, make, would be making something close to 80, 80 bucks. And if you multiply that by the current price, which is about uh, 660 cities times 80, which business farmer would not love to do this? And the good thing about cocoa is that Regardless of your location and the volume you produce, you can sell every bean and make your money. So if you're a good cocoa farmer or a young man who is hungry for success and there's no business in the city for you, you and you have the land, you can get all the support you need from Cocoa Board and you set up. And within a period of five years, you should be producing at least two tons or at least a ton. And in the next 10 years, you should be able to pull three tons per, 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 acre, uh, sorry, per hectare. So that is, that is a very good thing that um, maybe, I don't know whether we have communicated this uh, very well uh, for all to see, or the, the, we, the, the, it is our, our, I mean, our, our people who haven't really realized and or sat down to look at the, the the mathematics of it and the economics of it, but I think we have demonstrated it, and Ghanaians need to know. Maybe we may have to increase our our advocacy a bit more so that uh, we can encourage people, not only the youth, but those of us who are still in the public sector. You can get into this sector because there's the the technical information is available. All you need is the land and the commitment to do it. So we expect many more farmers to benefit from quality services such as farm management, quality inputs, credit, etc. In addition to all the, the, the PEPs, we run farmer business school training and additional livelihood programs using structured modules for cocoa farmers. Our strategy is to enhance the farm yield so that the cocoa farmers would not need to increase farm sizes uh, to increase their income levels. While this strategy raises incomes from the fields, it equally ensures the protection of our forest to, to reduce environmental footprint. Cocoa Board also promotes the formation of farmer cooperatives and enhances their capacities to, to represent their interest in, in the supply chain. You know, we have registered close to 12,000 cooperatives nationwide. We supported these groups in many ways by channeling essential cocoa inputs through their platforms to the farmers. Recent examples include distributing motorized pruners, training the members to pollinate their plantations, and supporting them with the tools to pollinate the trees. One of the challenges of cocoa farming as the aging farmers whose shoulders, on whose shoulders the industry rests. 
Research has shown that above one's productive age, there is a negative correlation between the age of a cocoa farmer and productivity. This observation has a far-reaching consequence on the future sustainability of the cocoa industry in Ghana. And I will implore the youth to venture into cocoa cultivation instead of waiting for the non-existing white collar job. And I will urge our young graduates looking for employment opportunities in the government private sector to create their own employment by going into cocoa farming. To improve the regulatory function of the cocoa sector, Cocoa Board is developing a cocoa management system. The seamless operating system will ensure that the actors can track cocoa beans every stage of the direct supply chain. The process involved registering cocoa farmers, including the household members, farm sizes, and geographic locations, and creating a digital payments ecosystem whereby every farmer can make or receive payments digitally. The implementation of CMS will revolutionize cocoa farming and make it attractive to the financial sector and input suppliers. This effort will promote financial inclusion, the emergence of crop insurance, and the design and implementation of an input credit system. In value addition, CocoaPod promotes small-scale processing by bringing all the artisanal chocolate manufacturers together under one umbrella to support them. We are currently considering a draft regulation and guidelines for artisanal chocolate manufacturers and creating an enabling environment to improve their business. Most of the artisanal chocolate manufacturers have expressed their intentions to go into bar, into bar processing. Still, they face some constraints in assessing cocoa beans, since by law, they cannot buy directly from the cocoa farmer. Cocoa Board is in discussion with a group to create a unique channel to purchase cocoa beans from Cocoa Board. And at this point, I want to encourage all artisanal chocolate makers in Ghana. This year, your input requirements, write to us, request the volumes you need, we'll make a way and supply you, meet your requirements. Mr. Chairman, the cocoa industry holds the future for today's generation. Opportunities exist in the industry for today's generation to exploit. I will encourage today's generation, especially the youth, to tap the potential to tap the potentials continuously in the field. Thank you so much for your for being so attentive. Uh, we just had the remarks of the chief executive officer of Cocoa Board. Um, that's good news right there also, that the artisans, uh, the association of, uh, is it Kovac? Yes, Kovac would be happy to hear that Cocoa Board is ready to supply you with the, all the beans that you need to facilitate your, your work. Uh, remember that we are virtual, and so we're having Dr. Esther Jedu Akoto uh, of Craig uh, to join us in, with her remarks. This is virtual, so we'll watch her on the screen.
todas las locas. I move on to the next yes because we don't want to um indeed i think that's it um i also have from gta remark from GTA. thank you so much um dr sergio okoto please when you're ready we'll have you on thank you so The Honorable Deputy Minister of Trade and Industry, Deputy Minister for Food and Agriculture, CEO Ghana Export Promotions Authority, the CEO Ghana Investment Promotion Center, CEO of Cocoa Board, CEO of Know Your Cocoa Foundation, officials of Africa Secretariat, dignitaries present, media, and all our cherished viewers watching us online. I bring you all greetings from the Chief Executive Officer of the Ghana Tourism Authority, Mr. Akusi Ajeman. He would have loved to be here with you this afternoon. Unfortunately, he had to attend to an equally important assignment just within the same time. Mr. Chairman, the Ghana Tourism Authority is excited and pleased that this year's event is taking place. Due to the latest technological innovations, we can celebrate the second African Cocoa and Chocolate Expo 2021 successfully in a hybrid format, still getting the important message across to a larger audience watching us virtually. The theme, African Beyond Beans, raising a new generation of cocoa pioneers for world creation, is a very thoughtful one, and we must applaud the organizers. Yes, Ghana is known to produce the best cocoa, Yet, we must go beyond that. Our finished products need more worldwide recognition. The Ghana Tourism Authority is responsible for the promotion of Ghana's tourism product locally and internationally. Cocoa is one such product, which has become a national cultural identity. In our quest to encourage the consumption of cocoa-based products, the National Chocolate Day was instituted by the Ministry of Tourism Art and Culture, in collaboration with the GTA and Cocoa Board in 2005 on the 14th February to create awareness for Ghanaians to patronize cocoa finished products. 14th February every year in Ghana is celebrated as a National Chocolate Day. More media sensitizations are organized across the country stressing on the importance of cocoa beans to the entrepreneur and its health benefits the consumer. Chocolates are shared for school children and hospitals, depending on the theme. The National Chocolate Day is now an important feature in the tourism calendar of events. To enhance the visitor experience and to celebrate our national area, GTA constructed a museum at the Tetekwashi Coco Farm in Equiapi Mampom in 2020. In 2020 the authority, as part of its promotional activities internationally, always distributes chocolate and other cocoa products to international tourists at fairs and exhibitions to promote the consumption of Ghana's chocolates internationally. We will support educational campaigns such as this, which are geared towards creating visibility both locally and internationally, and which will bring development into the destination. So we urge cocoa premiers to come up with cocoa products that can be patronized even by our hotels, restaurants, and tourists, packaging the cocoa butters, the cocoa soaps in smaller sizes for patronage by the, ho the hotels, taking pricing into consideration. These products must be affordable in the market. We also urge our hotels, restaurant operators, and traditional to inculcate Ghanaian traditional food made from cocoa beans into the menus. 
we also encourage event organizers to come, to come up with well-organized events on cocoa festivals that can be marketed to attract regional and international tourists as well as local participation. The authority is ever ready to raise the image of Ghana beyond cocoa beans and to promote a well-packaged finished product locally and internationally. The new generation is fortunate. The technology, the financial institutions, the support of the government are all at our disposal. Our forefathers have searched for the beans. We have them in abundance. Kudos to our farmers. Let's work together so that we can move Ghana beyond cocoa beans. On that note, ladies and gentlemen, the Ghana Tourism Authority urges all of us to keep consuming cocoa products because it is the only way to build strong, sustainable businesses to raise the next generation of cocoa premiers. Thank you so much. Uh, next, we'd like to take the remarks from uh, Dr. Komla Sisi. Um, he's from the AFCTA. Is Dr. Bisi here? Okay. Principal H is Important event, more specifically to throw more light on the requirements value to co products. Uh, that is a priority not only for Ghana, but for the region as a whole. Uh, I must mention, as you are all aware, that the AFCFT arrangement or the another free trade. Uh, has started maybe because of issues in the region of the and the uh, negotiations are far advanced. Uh, I will not go much into, into that detail. But more specifically, uh, the Secretariat has resolved to take an uh, industrial development approach to addressing the challenges that are within the context of our value chain and also to help strengthen specific value chains across regions, of which cocoa is one. We have already been holding a series of consultations internally, and also with such as the cocoa to understand uh, what the requirements are, and also intervention that we can support to be able to leverage you know, the issues of adding value to cocoa and be able to trade with cocoa and cocoa products across the region. I must also mention that we have received very favorable uh, offers in terms of tariffs, etc., uh, that will enable you to be able to export your cocoa and cocoa products with very minimal, even if not at zero, negotiation. Uh, we will be working with you to get a better understanding of the regional market or the regional market. Uh, and also the opportunity within the region uh, so that we can be able to continue to assess the, the market. Already, uh, approached me earlier on to understand what the AFCFA Secretariat can do to be able to provide uh, market access opportunities for the within the region. These are some of the details we will be 
following up on the quality authorities and uh, other partners globally to solve the trust. I must also mention, it's unfortunate, uh, my senior colleague, the minister, the fact that the Chief Minister is not here with us today, but my colleague uh, spoke about. Uh, I believe it is now a common knowledge, uh, as many colleagues have already mentioned, that, uh, that we need to work together to get the maximum benefit. Uh, I'm a Ghanaian, uh, having been part of this process globally. Investment on the continent. I, I keep asking myself if the benefits are this huge and enormous for cocoa. How come it took us so long, you know, to, 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 to take this bold decision? And this is one question I wish my senior colleague from the uh, cocoa board and the minister will, will help us to clarify. But that said, we are committed, you know, uh, collectively to help. Uh, move this agenda forward, and also building on the president's own commitment and uh, declaration that we, we, we got to do something. So we, we will continue to help. But I believe for us to be able to do a few things, one, we must continue to provide the required policy incentives, you know, that allow the private sector to have the senior colleague, again from Cocoa Board, mentioned I mean, the issues around the policies that prevent us from able to uh, allow uh, our small holders to be able to access Cocoa Beans. Why is it taking us so long to make this decision? I mean, we, we, we must just make these smart policies. It, it is in our interest, in our, so the decision is ours. We shouldn't waste time on them. Also, I think we need to ensure that we provide the required incentive that will allow the small process to be able to process, to be able to process and, and, and to be able to enter the rich market. We cannot keep talking about opportunities or taking advantage of AFCFT opportunities when we don't provide local incentives for our, our processes to, to, to be able to take advantage of the, of the rich market. Otherwise, what will happen is that still uh, our local producers and processors will still be disadvantaged if they don't have the required incentive. And then still uh, we'll have the bigger guys still taking advantage of the opportunities that we, we, we are providing at the continent. Therefore, with these few remarks, I must mention that, yes, at the AFCF period, we committed to supporting the uh, initiative. It is a priority already. And uh, we'll work with you to understand what exactly the Secretariat can do. We already have our ideas, and um, we, we are very committed to this process. And I thank you very much for this opportunity. Dr. Komla Bis from the AFR. AFCTA. That's right, the Secretariat. So we will take, yeah, thank you very much. We're, we're now being joined uh, by the Echo Chocolate Show from Nigeria. We'll take their remarks. Hopefully we will see them. Okay. Most importantly, I would like to appreciate the cocoa farmers in Ghana and all other cocoa producing countries in Africa, including Nigeria, Ivory Coast, Cameroon, as well as those in the Caribbean region, St. Lucia, Grenada, Trinidad and Tobago, Jamaica, and others in Latin America and Asia. Without the toil and sacrifices of these farmers, there will be no beans not to talk of having a reason to celebrate or even discuss cocoa or chocolate today. For us at Etione Development Group, 
we started this journey of redefining Africa in 2014 to tell our own stories based on our own narratives to create value that will lead to transformation using the three main God-given resources, our land, our people, and cocoa. This led us to launch the Cocoa Renaissance Initiative in 2014 through the Cocoa Festival, celebrated annually to return self-worth and self-dignity to our farmers that the next generation cocoa farmers can embrace to achieve sustainability and another 125 years of production while we create the cocoa culture that will ultimately create wealth and transform our communities. The beauty of ACE, that is the Africa Cocoa and Chocolate Expo, is the fact that it is a private initiative that can drive entrepreneurship, taking advantage of what free market economies offer. And we believe this can only be achieved through different levels of partnerships. And the very reason why we also launched the annual Royal Cocoa Festival Dinner London in 2017 as a platform to engage the world, create opportunities for networking, exchange of ideas and culture. We also held the first Eco Chocolate Show in April 2019 to build bridges between cocoa production and consumption. And I want to seize this opportunity to let everyone know that plans are well on the way for the first edition of the International Cocoa Festival in May 2022 at St. Lucia to further deepen the bond and partnerships between Africa and the Caribbean as we forge ahead to strengthen that relationship and together make cocoa a sweet story of love all. Lastly, I trust the next couple of days will be very interesting, educative and inspiring and I wish everyone a memorable and worthwhile experience at the Africa Cocoa and Chocolate Expo 2021. Thank you.
City, Ghana Cocoa Board, Ghana Investment Promotion Center, Ghana Tourism Authority, and the Secretary General of the African Continental Free Trade Area, Nana Ebiana II, co-founder of Know Your Cocoa Foundation, representatives of ministries, departments, and agencies, Ghanaian and international participants, our friends from the media, ladies and gentlemen. Let me begin by commending the Ghana Export Promotion Authority and Know Your Cocoa Foundation for their ongoing partnership and determination to promote the industrialization agenda of Ghana, with particular focus on the cocoa sector. I find this partnership as an important step towards improving public-private partnerships in the area of export trade. It will bring many benefits not only to the cocoa sector, but also all priority sectors outlined in the National Export Development Strategy. Even though cocoa is synonymous with Ghana, and after many years of cocoa production, knowledge of the many uses of cocoa and its derivatives remains very low among our people. I am aware that Cocoa Research Institute of Ghana, CRAE, has been undertaking some very important research into value addition in the cocoa sector for the last few decades. CRAE requires all our support to maximize the benefits from the cocoa sector in pursuit of our industrial transformation agenda. The very excellent work that the Minister of Food and Agriculture is doing in the cocoa sector, together with the Ghana Cocoa Board, is bearing significant fruit. Production has once again hit the 1 million metric ton mark this cocoa season. But what is the implication of the major achievement for the cocoa sector? It means that we need to pay more attention to value addition which His Excellency the President has been emphasizing over the last five years. It is for this reason that the Ministry of Trade and Industry has embarked on an aggressive implementation of the 10-point industrial transformation agenda. It is refreshing that the private sector in the cocoa value chain has so far responded positively to this agenda, and investments in cocoa processing have enabled us to move from 30, around 30% 30 total value addition to almost 50% at present. In light of this positive development, I must single out the, and commend highly Niche Cocoa Processing Company, a wholly owned Ghanaian processor, for their achievements in this relatively short period of their operation in the Tema Free Zone enclave. The success is chalked by Niche Cocoa is a signal to other Ghanaian investors to consider diversifying their investments in cocoa processing. Distinguished ladies and gentlemen, let me also take the opportunity to commend the Ghana Export Promotion Authority and its formidable Chief Executive, Dr. Efwa Sabia Sari, for their excellent vision in promoting the value addition agenda in the cocoa sector. Their partnership with Know Your Cocoa Foundation a private, not-for-profit organization dedicated to the development of the cocoa value chain in organizing the African Cocoa and Chocolate Expos has demonstrated the, that the public and private sector working together in the spirit of collaboration does indeed yield positive results. I'm happy to note that this year's African Cocoa and Chocolate Expo is the second edition in the series the maiden one having been held in 2019. I also note that the event aligns well with pillars one and three of the National Export Development Strategy, which require that we invest heavily in production and value addition to take advantage of the opportunities as well as build on our human resources capable of supporting the export growth agenda of government. The choice of the theme for this second edition of the Expo, Africa Beyond Beans, raising a new generation of cocopreneurs for wealth creation, is also very significant for two reasons. First, it puts into perspective the vision of His Excellency the President of a Ghana Beyond Aid. A Ghana Beyond Cocoa Beans is in harmony with the President's vision of value addition even more so in the cocoa sector where the big money is made in tertiary processing. Second, raising the new generation of Ghanaian entrepreneurs in the cocoa sector will help in no small measure to fill the yawning youth unemployment gap 
and improve livelihoods with the overall effect of increasing our export revenue annually to achieve the 25.3 billion United States dollars set in the National Export Development Strategy within the next decade. Invited guests, ladies and gentlemen, I am equally happy that this second edition of the African Cocoa and Chocolate Expo is being held in the virtual space in response to the challenge and threat posed by the COVID-19 pandemic. Indeed, the pandemic cannot and should not limit our ability to innovate even as public sector agencies. With the aid of technology, I know that ACCE21 has an even wider and global reach as many more participants and global investors in the cocoa value chain can have access to the event from wherever in the world they are. Ladies and gentlemen, it makes a lot of business sense to tap into the benefits brought about by digital technology. And I am happy that as a trade promotion organization, GEPA is tapping into this new way of export promotion and I encourage them to do more within this space. I cannot end my remarks without once again reiterating the enormous export opportunities brought to the fore by the African continental free trade area. It is common knowledge that it is a market worth some 3 trillion United States dollars for Africa's 1.3 billion people and the fact that the Secretariat is headquartered in Accra puts Ghana in pole position to take full benefit of the free trade area. But the benefits will not accrue automatically. We have to work for it and the time is now. Full implementation of the National Export Development Strategy, as well as all other government policies, the 10-point Industrial Transformation Agenda, the very popular 1D1F, and the 100 billion Ghana Cares of Atapa program provide a sure prescription for success in this regard. I challenge our next generation of cocopreneurs to take advantage of this opportunity created by the ACCE 2021 to trigger a conversation that will lead to their full integration into the cocoa processing sector. And I am hopeful that this platform will avail them local and international partners for the realization of that dream. Once again, let me commend Ghana Export Promotion Authority and all its partners for an excellent job done. The Know Your Cocoa Foundation and its international partners, the Ministry of Food and Agriculture, Ghana Cocoa Board, GIPC, and Ghana Tourism Authority are all to be commended. I urge Ghana Export Promotion Authority to ensure that it sustains this very important annual Ghanaian event on the international calendar. One that cocoa and chocolate enthusiasts will continue to look forward to. And to that extent, GEPA can count on the support and collaboration of the Ministry of Trade and Industry. On this very hopeful note, and on behalf of the Minister of Trade and Industry, Honorable Alan Tremartin, it is my singular honor to now declare the second African Cocoa and Chocolate Expo duly opened. I thank you for your attention. of you to the African Cocoa and Chocolate Expo. Panda Chocolates is a fair trade, non-GMO chocolate that is grown, processed, and packaged in Ghana before any distribution. And that's what makes us so excited about this year's theme, Africa Beyond Beans, because that's everything that we believe in and have been trying to elevate. We want Ghana to be synonymous with excellent chocolate. They already are, but people don't know they're getting Ghanaian chocolate. So on our bars, we brand and say all of our chocolate is grown, processed, and packaged in Ghana because it's a source of pride. And being able to export finished chocolate from Ghana is another source of pride. I want Ghana and everyone that I partner with in Ghana to have a greater cut of the chocolate billion dollar industry versus just getting the money from the cocoa beans. So Africa Beyond Beans is truly dear to my heart and something that we can get behind. So I'm so excited again to welcome you to this year's expo, the African Cocoa and Chocolate Expo. And I truly hope that we can all partner in ways to find, to elevate the 
chocolate experience coming out of Africa. Thank you and welcome. Ladies and gentlemen, Aquaba, and welcome to the African Cocoa and Chocolate Expo or ACCE. My name is Bill Guyton, and I'm the executive director of the Fine Chocolate Industry Association or FCIA. Uh, we're a small organization of about 300 to 350 companies that are focused on promoting quality chocolate. We represent collectively about 5 to 10% of the entire chocolate industry. So although it's small, it's growing, and it's, in, in, it's growing in importance. Um, our company members are located around the world. The majority are in North America, but we also have European company members, some from Asia, Latin America, and yes, Africa too. And in fact, one of our company members is based in Accra, Ghana. Mindunu Chocolate uh, is a proud member of ours for the last couple of years. So we're very happy to have uh, that company as part of our organization. Um, many of our members are small family run businesses and innovations is part of their DNA. Uh, they are constantly looking for new, making new types of products and looking for quality flavor beans from around the world. Uh, the theme of your conference this year is Africa Beyond Beans, raising a new generation of cocopreneurs. I love that word uh, for wealth creation. And how fitting that is with the direction of FCIA members too. It's all about the benefits that business innovations can bring to farmers, to chocolate makers, and to consumers alike. Over the next three days, I know you'll have some very interesting presentations, and I hope we all can join together to support those who are, are looking at new ways of growing, trading, processing, marketing cocoa and chocolate products. I wish you a very successful conference. Thank you so much. Hello and welcome to the African Cocoa and Chocolate Expo. It is an honor to share this space with you today. My name is Fatima Zora Hakam and I'm from Morocco. I'm also the founder of Zora, a chocolate company whose mission is to champion a radical change in the way that the world sees West African cocoa. We want chocolate to mean more, to make it synonymous with equality, inclusivity, and meaningful connection. We're working towards creating greater space for Ghana and West Africa within the fine flavored specialty industry and creating mindfully made chocolate through a 72% dark chocolate bar. By sourcing our cocoa from Suhum and creating a delicious end product that can fully embrace West African cocoa flavors as being fine flavored, we can take one step closer at shifting the narrative and having greater representation within the fine specialty chocolate market. According to the African Development Bank, out of the $100 billion spent annually on chocolate, the African continent only keeps half. This year's theme, Africa Beyond Beans, is incredibly powerful. Ghana has been an industry leader producing quality beans and contributing to much of the chocolate that we know and love worldwide for over a century. So, as we come together on this special day to focus on Africa Beyond Beans, celebrate achievements and innovations within our industry, let us recognize and also celebrate the incredible work, dedication, and knowledge that is passed on from generation to generation of cocoa farmers and advocate for a future where Ghana is not only known for its quality, excellent quality cocoa beans, but its excellent quality chocolate.
foundation or KYC came about because we realized that there was a paucity and a lack of knowledge really about uh, cocoa in, in Ghana. When you look at it, we use just around 19% of the cocoa bean, so 81% of the cocoa tree is unutilized. So we thought that it was high time to be in a position to educate, to create events, to, to create the, the necessary platforms to develop cocoa knowledge and opportunities a lot further. The theme for this year's H event is Africa Beyond Beans. Currently, Ghana and the Ivory Coast together earn almost just less than five billion dollars whilst the chocolate industry alone and not even factoring cosmetics etc the value is Leslie. she's done this many times she's director of education for the acc and she's going to walk us through these amazing chocolates she tells me over to you thank you so much yeah this is um the it's just about a 10 minute session but for me it's one of the most exciting sessions of the day because we're getting to taste some of the products that come right here from Ghana. So I'll be leading a quick chocolate tasting with four different chocolates from Bioko Treat. And just so you all know, each of these chocolates that we'll taste today is made with cocoa grown in Ghana, and it is made here in Ghana. And so we are really going to be getting the flavor of Ghana cocoa here today, along with some other really innovative flavors that I personally love. So we'll, um, Without further ado, we'll get to our tasting. So you have in front of you a tasting mat. It's got four chocolates on it. We'll start in the top left-hand corner, and we're going to go clockwise. So the first chocolate we'll taste is the Intense Dark. And so you can start out in that top left-hand corner with your chocolate. And the first thing we do in a tasting is we look at our chocolate. Mm -hmm. So we look at it to see if it looks <laughs> nice, if it looks shiny, if it looks like it's been tempered well, <laughs> and those cocoa butter crystals are lined up very nicely. So you can look at it, you can even sort of brush your finger along it to, to enhance the shine. Okay. Something else we, we like to do with dark chocolate is to snap it. Really? Near your ear. Okay. Yes, we listen to our chocolate, so you can do see if you hear that nice snap. I yeah. did. And if you did, it means yeah. the chocolate is in good temper. Oh. Right? It means the cocoa butter crystals are lined up very beautifully, very strong, and this bar will last a long time on the shelf. How are you able to determine all this? Oh, from many years of practice and mm. study. Mm. <laughs> so, but for, 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 for anyone, including those of you who are enjoying the chocolates around uh, the Gepa building today, we have these chocolates everywhere. If you're, if you're joining us from home, anytime you have a piece of dark chocolate like this, you too can look and see it visually. Is it Tiny, is it even? We do the snap, and then you too can learn if it's in, if it's in good temper. We right. call it if it's tempered well. So very nice, easy thing to do with your chocolate. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Of course, you want to taste it, so okay. you can put it in a piece in your mouth and taste it. And in fact, we recommend that you don't chew; that you actually let it melt in your mouth. <laughs> I'm getting some quizzical looks, but I crunched it. <laughs> you, all right, if you chewed. <laughs> Okay, you haven't haven't ruined the experience, <laughs> but when you do allow it to melt in your mouth, what you experience is the full range of flavors. The flavor of chocolate might change from the beginning to the middle to the end, and so these flavors are very complex. And when you allow that chocolate to melt, you give your mouth the time and the um, the space. To experience all of the flavors that will come out in this particular chocolate. Now you may be wondering, this on your sheet and on this bar, it says seventy percent. So we often see percentages on cocoa or chocolate bars these days. What this number means is that seventy percent of what's in that bar is cocoa. Right? Seventy percent is from the pod, is from the tree, it's a cocoa material that's in there. The other 30% is generally the sweetener. And so um, Bioko chocolates actually has a range of, of bars with different sweeteners in them. So you can visit their website and see what they offer. This one happens to be just regular sugar. 
and that will be the most typical sweetness, either beet sugar or cane sugar. And so what do you taste? What flavors do you taste in this 70% dark chocolate? What, is your, what does your experience tell you? Yeah, I, I think more of chocolate. I like, I like chocolate. Without sugar, I think that is well. I can taste a lot of When you when you um, when you know the taste of cocoa as we as we often do here in Ghana, you can taste it in the bar itself. Many bars um, don't tell you the percentage, but you can learn in your palate to determine how dark is this bar or not. Is it got a lot of cocoa content in it, or is it a little bit on the sweeter side? But this one, as you say, is very dark. It's very rich. Does it taste like Ghana? For me, it really tastes. I feel the the concentration of cocoa in there and what I like about this particular one is the homogenized. So smooth, uh, you don't feel any particles. So, so, so smooth. For me, that's a mark of good quality. And then, you know, <clears throat> sometimes when you hear dark chocolate, you know there's going to be a lot of bitterness. But the bitterness in this one, it's not very sharp. You can feel the bitterness, but yet there's some sweetness underlining so i think it's okay for me with the experience of how the dark chocolate i think this is okay the bitterness is quite on the low i mean if we as we all know if you taste a, a cocoa bean before it's been processed it will have that bitter taste yeah. to it but you know the talented chocolate makers can take out that bitterness without adding a lot of sugar mm -hmm. and so i think we've got to say you know well done to jean donk or at, Bio at bioko treats because she knows how to, to coax out a beautiful smooth flavor and create a lovely smooth texture without adding excessive amounts of sugar, which is what we might see in some, some other brands. So she's I done like a beautiful job. A yes. Yes. <laughs> so, you know, many, many of you may know that when cocoa's harvested fresh off the, the tree, scooped, the beans scooped out of the pod, first thing that happens is they're fermented. Mm -hmm. And so here in Ghana, the farmers do heap fermentation, which means they put those beans on a bed of plantain leaves, create a heap, cover them with more plantain leaves. That fermentation yeah. process is exactly what starts to give the bean the taste of chocolate. And so you really need to ferment well, as farmers do here in Ghana, to bring out that beautiful taste of chocolate. If you don't ferment well, you will have an off flavor to the, to the chocolate bar in the end, and it won't be very nice. These are nicely fermented. So we have to say congratulations to the farmers as well. So first bar, cocoa sugar. That's it. Maybe another um, something added in or two, maybe some vanilla is often added to enhance the flavor. But nowadays, we're seeing lots of really interesting inclusions, we call them, added to a chocolate bar, which bring out the flavor of the cocoa in different ways. This bar, the next one, also by Bioko Treats, is got a very popular inclusion, which is sea salt, right? So this is Ada sea salt, and that is the second piece on the top right-hand side of your tasting sheet, the Ada sea salt. Same chocolate, 70% dark, but this one with a sea salt on it. So you can snap it if you want, you can look at it, Certainly taste it. See what the addition of this sea salt inclusion does. When I first encountered chocolate with a salt inclusion, I thought it was madness. I never, I thought it would not be a very nice experience at all. Boy, was I wrong. So the inclusion of salt really elevates the flavor of the chocolate. It gives us a contrast to the sweetness. Now for me, I never looked back. I was very happy to have cocoa and chocolate and sea salt from then on. So what do you think about our, our, our chocolate bar with sea salt? It is good. I think it's, it's a total deviation from the sugar taste you're looking forward to. This is good. Yeah. Excellent. And I think it's also a variety for those who don't like sugar. They can still eat dark chocolate. 
a unique niche for them. I mean, it's, it's really the first for me. I love to talk to them. This time, when I was working, I don't know. So when he goes out on a loan, this is nice. He buys mm -hmm. me a lot of stuff. It's just it's very very different, mm -hmm. and um, I think it tastes good. Um, you feel the salt in it. Um, you bite into the, the salt. Um, I just want to believe that the salt also adds some medicinal um, quality to it. So it. Feels good. Maybe I'll, I'll try some more. Yeah. I hope that we have some more mm -hmm. converts to mm -hmm. chocolate with salt because <laughs> I was immediately converted the first time I tasted. Uh, yeah, it's, yeah. Good. it's good. It's good. Uh, this, this, uh, I was thinking differently when I saw the salt added in there. I was beginning to think that it would be a bit bitter than the first one I tasted. Mm -hmm. All of them being seventy percent cocoa, this one being salt. But uh, ironically, when I tasted it. it the taste was rather greater than even the first, mm. you know, very, very inviting. And it's something that you can, you can uh, lick on and on and on and on without getting tired. Really, really, really interesting. Fun. It's fun. Really. It's fun. Yeah. And I love that you said that. And I also, I encourage you, you know, to all of us to think about chocolate as a food. Mm -hmm. When we cook because home, of mainly the support right? that it well, gives to it cocoa and cocoa derivatives, we have been we supporting so we many other products and services. And it is important that cocoa is also supported, everything that comes out of cocoa. And to do that, we need to showcase what we have. By working with Gepa, ACC is also basically aligning itself so to, the to the Africa the Continental Free okay, Trade Area Agreement, dark, which we have all signed the on to, and exposing itself to the... Moving to milk chocolate. So for here, um, and for anyone in the Gepa building who's tasting along with us, the bottom left-hand corner is the milk chocolate, 50%. So now we know that means 50% <laughs> of what's in that bar is cocoa. And the rest will be, of course, milk powder, maybe some vanilla, some sugar. So you can take this one on the bottom right-hand corner. You can still do the snap. It won't be maybe as sharp a snap as with the dark. because The milk powder might soften things a little bit. But it will still snap. And you can have a very lovely milk chocolate experience, um, which will certainly taste sweeter. Um, but hopefully you still get that flavor of the nice Ghana cocoa beans in there. Please. Should be very different, eh? Should be different. Now, there's two schools of thought when you do a chocolate tasting. You can go from the higher percentage to the lower percentage, which is what we've done, or you can go the other way. Me, I prefer to do dark to light, to, to higher percentage to lower percentage, because I want your palate to be fresh when you're tasting the darker chocolate, then you move to the sweeter ones. They will taste sweeter because you've just tasted the higher percentage. If we did it in the other direction, they might not have tasted quite as sweet because we wouldn't have had that contrast to begin with. But when you have sugar in your palate, it may disturb somehow the, the, the um, taste experience of the darker bars. So for me, I like to start with dark and move my way to the lower percentages, but you can do it any way you want. The, the outcome will be the milks will taste sweeter to you. Anyone having a nice milk chocolate experience with this <laughs> beautiful bar, intense milk chocolate by Bioko, 50% cocoa. Well. Note about this, it melts very easily. Yeah. Um, uh, compressed to any chocolate I've eaten in Geneva or anywhere, I think you usually get the, the I don't know, the critique that Ghanaian chocolate is so hard <coughs> and very yeah. difficult to control. But this is the right kind of food. You know, 
the, we've been talking a lot about flavor, but the other component is texture, of course, right? Mm -hmm. That is the combination that we need in the chocolate bar is the flavor and the texture. And we need the texture to be creamy, even silky sometimes, but very smooth. For me, this is world class. Ghana has world class, yeah. world class chocolate bars. This could be competitive right. on the global market. Yeah. Completely. I know also some people are more a fan of milk, more a fan of dark, so you will have your Don't own you thoughts. Mean Ghana That's exact. Yes, that is exactly it. The world has Ghana class. That's exactly it. Yes, from now on, that is how I do my reference. Now we do the fourth and final chocolate of our tasting today. Extremely, extremely interesting. I have never seen a bar like this outside of Bioko Treats. This is our Gari and peanut butter chocolate bar. So the base is a milk chocolate. The base bar is the same as the one we just tasted but it has this inclusion of gari and peanut butter. So of course, we use ground nut or peanut a lot in, in cooking here in Ghana. You might have a ground nut sauce for your meals. We have peanuts or ground nuts being sold for a snack all over the place. We, so I think viewers around the world will be familiar with the peanut experience. They may be less familiar with gari. So gari is essentially like a, a flour made from cassava root, but used in many different ways. So what are some of the ways that you you enjoy gari? What are some of the dishes you that you... You can make it into a cake with all sorts of ingredients. It's very light. Okay. Oh. With okra. So very mm -hmm. much a savory then. I've heard also that students will take a lot of gari as a sweet, mm -hmm. like yes. a porridge almost with sugar and milk and stuff. Mm -hmm. So lots of different ways to have gari. I think there's a, a slight fermented flavor even to it in some cases. But truly, outside of Ghana, you will not find um, a bar like this. And so for me, this is one of my absolute favorites. I love it so much. I can eat a whole bar in one sitting. What do you think of our gari peanut butter? I think it's great. It's a combination of cassava, peanut, and yes. Yeah. I've not tasted it yet, but the whole concept. That's the concept. Yes. Okay. I'm, I'm going to snap it's, now. It's great. It's great. Um, okay. No. Not too snappy. No, I've finished tasting it already. But this is this is really good. Um, like you said, those who do not know Gary might think that it's something else, but you taste it, you would love it. I can love it already. In fact, I'm going to replace this with uh, okay. once I'm before eating. Um it it is such that um, people would need to understand how Gary feels before, because otherwise they can feel it really mm -hmm. like um, maybe it's a <laughs> but, but But it's very, very, very good. Gary is just cover flakes, so you can, you can eat it with milk, mm -hmm. sugar, water. That is what the students eat most. It's lovely. My, my daughter will wake up. Understand that you want to eat Gary soaking. <laughs> <laughs> so this is, I mean, I'm sure she's going to love this. She's going to love this. And I really love it. Really I'm thinking nice. this is very filling. Probably mm. the most filling of the whole bar. Yeah. Yeah. It's like a full meal. Yeah. Yes. 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 Yeah. 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 And then, and I think Hello. they miss it. Mm, yeah. This is yeah. The, the crunchy it's, 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 it, it does everything. Yeah. I think it's, it's a brilliant idea. Yeah. Even yeah. for students, we can. Cut down a bit on the gari that we are eating and then use this as a sweetener or a dessert, even at senior high schools, and then Fantastic it'll work. Yeah, it'll work. It'll work. Right. For, for me, this, it's, it's, this, this uh, gari. It's, it's a brilliant peanut idea. Butter thing. <clears throat> it's like a paradox. Mm. There's some smoothness in there, there's yeah, some yeah, crunchiness yeah. out there. And it reminds me of childhood uh, sweet that we used to take uh, this uh, peanut uh, cake. Popularly called cake. 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 Mm -hmm. I'm, 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 I'm glad you are all identifying. Mm -hmm. This is so fun. And whoever loves uh, peanut cake or cake will, will love, definitely love this. Mm -hmm. That's good. Sometimes That's good. You just gave yeah. me an idea. That's Imagine good. Imagine cake with the chocolate spread over ah, it. Yeah. 
will be fantastic. It's good. Yes. I will be it's buying that by the pound and mm. eating it every day. I also want to talk about the branding. Yes. On each individual piece, it, they said the branding, it, Joko is on it, and right. I think that is quite innovative. It's not even so with a lot of foreign um, topics to eat, so I believe that it's also very good. It's very well. Yeah. And, you know, the, the word bioko, I think, is really important for us to remember that um, this is the, the contemporary name for the island of Fernando Po, which is where Tete Korshi brought the very first cocoa seeds back to Ghana from. And so this is really um, a, a celebration of the history of cocoa in Ghana, even in the very name of the bar. And as we can see, Jean Donkor has done amazing, brilliant work with her chocolate. I really look forward to it more bars from her and um and i'm so happy that i have i think hopefully some converts here to to the different kinds of flavor inclusions exactly. i love what you said about the guy bar that it does everything it does everything and i think that is a really nice way to to sum it up like chocolate really can do everything for you it can be a complete <laughs> experience um for your for your taste buds for the texture and i think overall for our our, our emotional well-being gives us so much pleasure. So it has been a pleasure to taste chocolate with you today. Thank you so much for joining me. We'll be tasting chocolate every day at ACCE this year. And so I look forward to our next tastings. But thank you. Thank you, thank you, so thank you for much, having Dr. us. Christy Chocolate mm -hmm. Leslie. We appreciate you taking us through the chocolate. So let me just put it out there for the record. All I want for Christmas is the Oko Dari. <laughs> Indeed, so it's registered. Okay. It's amazing chocolate. Thank you once again. And thank you everybody else for sharing your opinions and uh, flavoring experience with us. <laughs> thank you. Thank, thank you. you. Um, I from the EPA and introducing cocoa in this area. Tell me how exactly it started and how are you taking over the business now? Uh, um, started from my forefather. Some did, some didn't do, and you know, if even if some did, I'll, I'll 
those who they didn't take it serious like how I'm doing now. Yeah, and they have a reason for, you know, when they, 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 they grew up at my age, they have a reason for not doing full-time uh, business with, with your yeah, cocoa farm. So what, what is the reason? Because I've visited quite a number of cocoa farms, and usually the farmers I meet are in their late 50s, getting 60s, but you are a young cocoa farmer. Why are you in business? I'm in the business because, first of all, I love farming. I love farming. I don't... The Know Your Cuckoo Foundation, or KYC, came about because we realized that there was a paucity and a lack of knowledge, really, about uh, cocoa in, in Ghana. When you look at it, we use just around 19% of the cocoa bean, so 81% of the cocoa tree is unutilized. So we thought that it was high time to be in a position to educate, to create events, to, to create the, the necessary platforms to develop cocoa knowledge and opportunities a lot further. The theme for this year's ACE event is Africa Beyond Beans. Currently, Ghana and the Ivory Coast together earn almost just less than $5 billion, whilst the chocolate industry alone, and not even factoring cosmetics, etc., the value is about $120 billion. And so we think that it's high time that we, we added value to our beans to get a lot more money out of what we grow and produce. GEPA is supporting ACCE because of mainly the support that it gives to cocoa and cocoa derivatives. We have been supporting so many other products and services, and it is important that cocoa is also supported, everything that comes out of cocoa. And to do that, we need to showcase what we have. By working with GEPA, ACC is also basically aligning itself to the Africa Continental Free Trade Area Agreement, which we have all signed on to, and exposing itself to the wider market of Africa. So we think that it is in the right direction that we are working with ACC and other partners as well, as we are promoting all of these um, partners on the African market. My name is Efua Asabia Asari. It will please me immensely if you can be a part of the ACC, either as an exhibitor or as a spectator, or as a potential exporter or somebody who wants to know about the cocoa business. I'll be very pleased if you pass through. Thank you. The Know Your Cuckoo Foundation, or KYC, came about because we realized that there was a paucity and a lack of knowledge, really, about uh, cocoa in, in Ghana. When you look at it, we use just around 19% of the cocoa bean, so 81% of the cocoa tree is unutilized. So we thought that it was high time to be in a position to educate, to create events, to, to create the, the necessary platforms to develop cocoa knowledge and opportunities a lot further. The theme for this year's ACE event is Africa Beyond Beans. Currently, Ghana and the Ivory Coast together earn almost just less than $5 billion, whilst the chocolate industry alone, and not even factoring cosmetics, etc., the value is about $120 billion. And so we think that it's high time that we, we added value to our beans to get a lot more money out of what we grow and produce. GEPA is supporting ACCE because of mainly the support that it gives to cocoa and cocoa derivatives. We have been supporting so many other products and services and it is important that cocoa is also supported, everything that comes out of cocoa. And to do that, we need to showcase what we have. By working with GEPA, 
ACC is also basically aligning itself to the Africa Continental Free Trade Area Agreement, which we have all signed on to, and exposing itself to the wider market of Africa. So we think that it is in the right direction that we are working with ACC and other partners as well, as we are promoting all of these um, partners on the African market. My name is Efua Asabia Asari. It will please me immensely if you can be a part of the ACC, either as an exhibitor or as a spectator, or as a potential exporter or somebody who wants to know about the cocoa business. I'll be very pleased if you pass through. Thank you. The Know Your Cuckoo Foundation or KYC came about because we realized that there was a paucity and a lack of knowledge really about uh, cocoa in, in Ghana. When you look at it, we use just around 19% of the cocoa bean, so 81% of the cocoa tree is unutilized. So we thought that it was high time to be in a position to educate, to create events, to, to create the, the necessary platforms to develop cocoa knowledge and opportunities a lot further. The theme for this year's H event is Africa Beyond Beans. Currently, Ghana and the Ivory Coast together earn almost just less than $5 billion, whilst the chocolate industry alone, and not even factoring cosmetics, etc., the value is about $120 billion. And so we think that it's high time that we, we added value to our beans to get a lot more money out of what we grow and produce. GEPA is supporting ACCE because of mainly the support that it gives to cocoa and cocoa derivatives. We have been supporting so many other products and services and it is important that cocoa is also supported, everything that comes out of cocoa. And to do that, we need to showcase what we have. By working with GEPA, ACC is also basically aligning itself to the Africa Continental Free Trade Area Agreement, which we have all signed on to, and exposing itself to the wider market of Africa. So we think that it is in the right direction that we are working with ACC and other partners as well, as we are promoting all of these um, partners on the African market. My name is Efua Asabia Asari. It will please me immensely if you can be a part of the ACC, either as an exhibitor or as a spectator, or as a potential exporter or somebody who wants to know about the cocoa business. I'll be very pleased if you pass through. Thank you. The Know Your Cuckoo Foundation or KYC came about because we realized that there was a paucity and a lack of knowledge really about uh, cocoa in, in Ghana. When you look at it, we use just around 19% of the cocoa bean, so 81% of the cocoa tree is unutilized. So we thought that it was high time to be in a position to educate, to create events, to, to create the, the necessary platforms to develop cocoa knowledge and opportunities a lot further. The theme for this year's H event is Africa Beyond Beans. Currently, Ghana and the Ivory Coast together earn almost just less than $5 billion, whilst the chocolate industry alone, and not even factoring cosmetics, etc., the value is about $120 billion. And so we think that it's high time that we, we added value to our beans to get a lot more money out of what we grow and produce. GEPA is supporting ACCE because of mainly the support that it gives to cocoa and cocoa derivatives. We have been supporting 
so many other products and services and it is important that cocoa is also supported everything that comes out of cocoa and to do that we need to showcase what we have by working with gepa acc is also basically aligning itself to the africa continental free trade area agreement which we have all signed on to and exposing itself to the wider market of africa so we think that it is in the right direction that we are working with acc and other partners as well as we are promoting all of these um, partners on the african market my name is efua asabia asari it will please me immensely if you can be a part of the ACC, either as an exhibitor or as a spectator, or as a potential exporter or somebody who wants to know about the cocoa business. I'll be very pleased if you pass through. Thank you. The Know Your Cuckoo Foundation or KYC came about because we realized that there was a paucity and a lack of knowledge really about uh, cocoa in, in Ghana. When you look at it, we use just around 19% of the cocoa bean, so 81% of the cocoa tree is unutilized. So we thought that it was high time to be in a position to educate, to create events, to, to create the, the necessary platforms. To Welcome to the Doctor Clinic or Cocoa Clinic session of the Africa Cocoa and Chocolate Expo. I think most importantly, there's been a lot of focus on cocoa as a confectioner or cocoa and chocolate as a confectioner. But historically, we all know that the Aztecs and the Mayans treasured cocoa so much they called it the food for the gods. And there are so many medicinal properties that come out of what we'd like to focus on briefly this afternoon is to talk about cocoa sex. My name is Dr. Yaron Fojo, also known as Nane Duna II. In this role, I shall play doctor. And I've been fortunate enough to have worked for Pfizer Pharmaceuticals as a sexual and medical health and medical sexual product advisor and we did some serious work on Viagra. Now, cocoa and your sex life. First and foremost, cocoa as an antioxidant is able to influence, importantly, nitrous oxide, which is very important for vasodilation or opening your blood vessels up. And erections actually are a function of blood going into your penis. So without that function of blood going to your penis, you cannot have good function. And one of the functions of cocoa is to stimulate the production of nitrous oxide. That's how come cocoa is able to lower blood pressure as well as make you get good erection. So for those who don't know, taking good cocoa, not necessarily chocolate, but get the real stuff. 
get cuckoo nibs, get natural healthy cuckoo powder. Another important aspect of cuckoo is its impact on the serotonin, the phenylethylamine, that influences your mood. And as you know, your sexual life, is, inf- especially for a female, is influenced by how they feel and how they are thinking. So when you have cocoa making you happy, then you can actually have a good sex life. And the phenylethylamine, serotonin, the tryptophans, etc., that are found in abundance in cocoa plus magnesium, impact or influence your sex life so much. Please take cocoa regularly. Take cocoa in abundance. There's no limit to how much cocoa you can take. It impacts greatly on the quality of your sex life. It impacts greatly on the quality of your life. It is very important that we're healthy, we're strong, and we're happy. Thank you very much. And this is a Cocoa Clinic segment of the African Cocoa and Chocolate Expo. Thank you. Uh, my name is Malik and Farmer in the lower west Akin, in the eastern region. I've been in the cocoa farming business for the past 13 years. As I say, I am a farmer myself. And I know what it is, how it takes, when and how cocoa is done. It's not an easy job. As I'm speaking now, people of my age in the cocoa industry, especially the farming, is not encouraging at all. One may ask why. Because nobody does any job to take something home. Some young guy venture into cocoa business or cocoa farming. Depending on the sales of the beans. So, what we are saying and now to the government, to the players in the cocoa industry, is to help add value to the beans. That is the only means to help farmers, to help them entice the young ones to also go into the cocoa farming industry. Because Ghana, I mainly our economy on cocoa. So if the young or the youth are not going in to do cocoa farming, where are we? Definitely for now, if you are to you know check how much young guys who are in cocoa farming, I would say it's less than twenty percent. No youth. It's not easy as we are saying, as I'm saying now. But the only way out is to add value to the beans so that the farmer can be properly taken care of. And also, the farmers need education as to how the modernization more. But for now, we are left with this. We are also going to take over the education. Take education, educating the farmers on the issue of how and when what should be done at the right time. And that's the main thing for now. So, I think
and to all those of us who've been able to join us on this first day of the Virtual Africa Cocoa and Chocolate Expo, thank you very much. It's been a new experience and we hope that you join us tomorrow, which will be the second day and the day after and the day after, and that you continue to support us in this venture to change the trajectory of cocoa in Africa. Thank you very much and see you tomorrow. It will please me immensely if you can be a part of the ACC, either as an exhibitor or as a spectator, or as a potential exporter or somebody who wants to know about the cocoa business. I'll be very pleased if you pass through. Thank you. The Know Your Cuckoo Foundation or KYC came about because we realized that there was a paucity and a lack of knowledge really about uh, cocoa in, in Ghana. When you look at it, we use just around 19% of the cocoa bean, so 81% of the cocoa tree is unutilized. So we thought that it was high time to be in a position to educate, to create events, to, to create the, the necessary platforms to develop cocoa knowledge and opportunities a lot further. The theme for this year's H event is Africa Beyond Beans. Currently, Ghana and the Ivory Coast together earn almost just less than $5 billion, whilst the chocolate industry alone, and not even factoring cosmetics, etc. The value is about $120 billion. And so we think that it's high time that we, we added value to our beans to get a lot more money out of what we grow and produce. GEPA is supporting ACCE because of mainly the support that it gives to cocoa and cocoa derivatives. We have been supporting so many other products and services and it is important that cocoa is also supported, everything that comes out of cocoa. And to do that, we need to showcase what we have. By working with GEPA, ACC is also basically aligning itself to the Africa Continental Free Trade Area Agreement, which we have all signed on to, and exposing itself to the wider market of Africa. So we think that it is in the right direction that we are working with ACC and other partners as well, as we are promoting all of these um, partners on the African market. My name is Efua Asabia Asari. It will please me immensely if you can be a part of the ACC, either as an exhibitor or as a spectator, or as a potential exporter or somebody who wants to know about the cocoa business. I'll be very pleased if you pass through. Thank you. The Know Your Cuckoo Foundation or KYC came about because we realized that there was a paucity and a lack of knowledge really about uh, cocoa in, in Ghana. When you look at it, we use just around 19% of the cocoa bean, so 81% of the cocoa tree is unutilized. So we thought that it was high time to be in a position to educate, to create events, to, to create the, the necessary platforms to develop cocoa knowledge and opportunities a lot further. The theme for this year's H event is Africa Beyond Beans. Currently, Ghana and the Ivory Coast together earn almost just less than $5 billion, whilst the chocolate industry alone, and not even factoring cosmetics, etc. The value is about $120 billion. And so we think that it's high time that we, we added value to our beans to get a lot more money out of what we grow and produce. GEPA is supporting ACCE because of mainly the support that it gives to 
cocoa and cocoa derivatives. We have been supporting so many other products and services and it is important that cocoa is also supported, everything that comes out of cocoa. And to do that, we need to showcase what we have. By working with GEPA, ACC is also basically aligning itself to the Africa Continental Free Trade Area Agreement, which we have all signed on to, and exposing itself to the wider market of Africa. So we think that it is in the right direction that we are working with ACC and other partners as well, as we are promoting all of these um, partners on the African market. My name is Efua Asabia Asari. It will please me immensely if you can be a part of the ACC, either as an exhibitor or as a spectator, or as a potential exporter or somebody who wants to know about the cocoa business. I'll be very pleased if you pass through. Thank you. The Know Your Cuckoo Foundation or KYC came about because we realized that there was a paucity and a lack of knowledge really about uh, cocoa in, in Ghana. When you look at it, we use just around 19% of the cocoa bean, so 81% of the cocoa tree is unutilized. So we thought that it was high time to be in a position to educate, to create events, to, to create the, the necessary platforms to develop cocoa knowledge and opportunities a lot further. The theme for this year's ACE event is Africa Beyond Beans. Currently, Ghana and the Ivory Coast together earn almost just less than $5 billion, whilst the chocolate industry alone, and not even factoring cosmetics, etc. The value is about $120 billion. And so we think that it's high time that we, we added value to our beans to get a lot more money out of what we grow and produce. GEPA is supporting ACCE because of mainly the support that it gives to cocoa and cocoa derivatives. We have been supporting so many other products and services and it is important that cocoa is also supported, everything that comes out of cocoa. And to do that, we need to showcase what we have. By working with GEPA, ACC is also basically aligning itself to the Africa Continental Free Trade Area Agreement, which we have all signed on to, and exposing itself to the wider market of Africa. So we think that it is in the right direction that we are working with ACC and other partners as well, as we are promoting all of these um, partners on the African market. My name is Efua Asabia Asari. It will please me immensely if you can be a part of the ACC, either as an exhibitor or as a spectator, or as a potential exporter or somebody who wants to know about the cocoa business. I'll be very pleased if you pass through. Thank you. The Know Your Cuckoo Foundation or KYC came about because we realized that there was a paucity and a lack of knowledge really about uh, cocoa in, in Ghana. When you look at it, we use just around 19% of the cocoa bean, so 81% of the cocoa tree is unutilized. So we thought that it was high time to be in a position to educate, to create events, to, to create the, the necessary platforms to develop cocoa knowledge and opportunities a lot further. The theme for this year's ACE event is Africa Beyond Beans. Currently, Ghana and the Ivory Coast together earn almost just less than $5 billion, whilst the chocolate industry alone, and not even factoring cosmetics, etc. The value is about $120 billion. And so we think that it's high time that 
we we added value to our beans to get a lot more money out of what we grow and produce. GEPA is supporting ACCA because of mainly the support that it gives to cocoa and cocoa derivatives. We have been supporting so many other products and services and it is important that cocoa is also supported, everything that comes out of cocoa. And to do that, we need to showcase what we 